Good morning, morning everyone. Happy happy Thursday, Chad Person. To you too. <laughs> to you too. It's uh, gonna be a lovely Thursday. It's a lovely Thursday. I go. And then the, the gadgets, it's a problem. No matter how you say it, it says they chip is in, but with 5176122 and 5370876, there was a request by the committee secretary long ago that we need to deal with that. <coughs> who, who, who is on these numbers? 51176, who are you? Five one one. Five three seven. I see your microphone is on. Who are you? Uh, good morning, Chairperson and the honorable members. Five three seven zero eight seven seven six is Vuyo Stofile from the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders. Unfortunately, I didn't know that the gadget was gonna show this. Mm. But uh, yeah, thanks, Chairperson. Go to the icon that allows you on participant to rename and you put it there. I'll try, Chairperson. And then five is what is five one one? Yeah, you have done it. Done. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Person. Done. Five one one seven six one two two. Who's there? Chair, Honorable Chairperson, I'm Tembi Sileto here from the Eastern Cape, uh, part of the Provincial Initiation Task Team from yes. Department of Social Development. Rename the gadget like Vuye is done, please. There's an icon there on participant that allow you to rename if you click on that number. Oh, okay, thank you. To allow you, you have done it as well. At least you have learned something today. Okay. DDG Shoki, good morning. Oh, DDG Shoki, I'm greeting you, man. Uh, okay, I'm muted. Good morning, uh, Chairperson, and to all the honorable members and colleagues. I'm deliberately doing that. I know your <laughs> DG is our regular, it's our regular attendee. So that's why we are greeting you. Morning, DG. <laughs> uh, good morning, good morning, honorable chair. Good morning. Okay. Uh, Dumela, uh, Deputy Minister. Tawel. Tawel, the material. The chairperson, Rudwile Legai. Ron, I see you've got two gadgets. I only the have one. one. There's, there's the another other one. one. Obed. Who's the other Obed now? I don't know. I was going to ask you then. There's another orbit in the meeting, but there's no same name. I don't know which one is that. Can we ask uh, maybe, the it's the CFO. maybe it's the CFO of DTA. He's sharing a name with me. Oh, Obed, rename your gadget so that we don't confuse the DM with you, please. <laughs> <laughs> HOD, HOD, Eastern Cape, good morning. Okay, I was doing that to, to check the attendees. Uh, all the colleagues, I think they are in the meeting. I see Honorable Brink, it's here. Honorable Direko, it's here. Honorable Spice, it's here. Honorable Pumza, it's here. Honorable Kurneval, it's here. Uh, good morning, yes. sir. HOG from Eastern Cape. Sorry, my gadget didn't want to pick up. Sorry for that. I thought you didn't want to greet the chair. <laughs> I know, sir. I wanted, I wanted to prove a point that now I know who's the HOD of cocktail in the and province. And the MBC said, I must just apologize for him. He's just stuck in another meeting. That's why I greeted you, because I saw he's not here. And then Honorable Butele is in the meeting as well. Welcome, colleague. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning. Yes, these are the colleagues that are in the meeting. I want to quickly deal with the apologies. Start with the one of the MEC, as you've heard, the HOD. 
Uh, yes, the meeting is uh, coinciding with some other activities. And then I want to- Recording in progress. Record the apology of Honorable Gavan Chavash is on sick leave. Honorable Klo on sick leave. Honorable Mabika on sick leave. Honorable Mkalipi, the minister, is not, uh, is attending to some other commitments, including the DG. I'm glad the deputy minister is here, the DG is here, the secretary of the house is here, DDG, Shoki Mkhaladi is here. There's an apology of DDG Shandu. And then uh, the colleagues from the deputy minister's office, uh, Reverend Ngobo and Brian, they are both here. So it's full house from DTA. We appreciate this, DM. And then I need to also welcome Inko Zizueli Dumi Mavuso, the acting chairperson of the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders. Welcome the visitor. Also to welcome uh, Mr. Nkansu, the secretary of the house. Also to welcome Mr. Stofile, House Operation Director. Also Mr. Somatela, Department of Health. Mr. Toya from Social Development. Brigadier Sapo from SAPS. Advocate Pangalele from National Prosecuting Authority, including Advocate Ntwela from the NPA. Yeah, I want to appreciate also the team from the Eastern Cape, it's, and then HOD, you are here. I've seen you. I suspect you've got also fellow team members from the department as well. So yes, I chair. want to, uh, yes, who is with you, HOD? Sorry, chair. I was saying, yes, chair. Charity Sewunu is also here, who's the chief director from Eastern Cape. Mm. Thank and you. who else? And yeah, Mr. Stofile, Mr. Stofile is part of my team because he's also oh, yeah, at the cooperative governance. Yes, thank you, Chair. Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the meeting. I, I want to appreciate all of you, especially the colleagues from SAPS and the NPA. I think then I want to welcome all of you maybe for a background for those which will be joining us for the first time uh, today. We had a meeting uh, 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 that, that we held on the 30th of March. Uh, this meeting is a consequence of the matters arising in that meeting. And then we had initially uh, scheduled this meeting for the 27th of July, 2021. Why we did that, we wanted to take stock of developments in your province over our December 2020 male cultural initiation season. In that meeting, we had resolved to have the Eastern Cape Provincial Initiation Task Team, the National Prosecuting Authority, the South African Police Service and the Provincial Department of Health as part of our next deliberation. As the presentation by Eastern Cape uh, Coxter also indicates, intervention into the initiation crisis are multi-sectoral in nature. The SAPS, the National Prosecuting Authority and the Department of Health are among the other critical stakeholders in the male cultural initiation value chain. Uh, last, the, on the 27th of July, on learning that the committee secretariat had omitted the, to extend the, an invitation to these stakeholders, we decided to defer the meeting to today in order to accommodate everyone. And I'm glad that everyone is present today. When you, you, you browse the current disaster management regulations, male customary initiation is prohibited. This is part of government's precautionary measures to limit the spread of COVID-19. When this prohibition was in full force, there were zero initiation related fatalities in the country, including your own hotspot HODs, your province in particular. 
This change when some traditional structures, mostly from the Eastern Cape, persuaded government to leave the ban uh, as some traditional communities were intending to resume the practice, even though there was at the risk of contravening the regulation. During our previous engagement on this matter, the minister herself and, uh, and has indicated that the National Command Council was open to accommodating the Eastern Cape, provided that those calling for the lifting of the ban were also prepared to take full responsibility and also to be held accountable should initiate, should initiate suffer. Um, we, as a committee, we are also said to note that when the Eastern Cape was allowed to proceed with the December 2020 initiation season, 14 initiates lost their lives, four suffered amputation, and 39 were, were hospitalized. We were informed that these deaths were not COVID-19 related. However, the presentation by the province indicates that at least one death was confirmed as a COVID-19 related complication. Therefore, for us as a committee, the question remains as to whether anyone has been held liable and accountable, as this was the condition up, upon which the December initiation season was allowed to proceed. We asked to be finished with the comprehensive report on the 14 fatalities, including support provided to the bereaved families and actions taken to effect consequence management. The question of consequence management is particularly important and is the main reason we wanted the NPA and the SAPS in particular to be part of this meeting. The report that was finished, the report that was finished to us by Nkosi Mavoso, the acting chairperson of the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders, drives home the point that uh, it's not just the 13 initiation facilities that are statistical numbers with nameless persons. These are real people whose lives have ended prematurely for no sensible reason. We must trace this unfortunate loss of life with the agency and seriousness it deserves. Having said that, I want to, to then also welcome the acting chairperson of the National House in Kosika Zumhaoli in this meeting. Uh, we all know that uh, we've lost the chairperson. And then we want to appreciate a uh, government for honoring our chairperson with that official state funeral. And we want to say as a committee, May his revolutionary soul continue to rest in peace and welcome a uh, chairperson. We know acting chairperson, these are still difficult and trying times for yourselves as the house, but we want to appreciate your, 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 your presence in this meeting and we always bank on your guidance and we are solely going to miss the chairperson's valuable contribution, the way he has made us as a committee in particular to understand all these matters that is to deal with the issues of the house. We, we want to celebrate the life and the little time that we had with him. But I must say, on behalf of the entire committee, we have learned a lot and we know that as you are there, acting chairperson, you will carry the pattern in his loving memory, in making sure that uh, this uh, prestigious institution of the House of Traditional Leadership is never taken for granted because this is what he believed in. Having said that, can I hand over to you, HOD, you will be able to assist us on how do we move forward on this matters. Over to you, HOD. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, 
I'll, I'll stand be guided by you, Chair, and uh, just to say first that I've missed uh, some members of uh, management in the meeting, uh, the top management of the department, most of them are in the meeting. We we'll recall the meeting that was postponed. Uh, uh, first, Mr. Stoffler did make a presentation. I would allow that, uh, uh, in fact, the acting chair is also part of the meeting to just follow the protocol because the MEC would have been here. The acting chair is in the meeting of the House of uh, Traditional Leaders. Um, I was going to ask uh, if that, uh, uh, if you give us the mandate to present what was presented in that meeting, the report of the Eastern Cape, stand to be guided by you, Chair. There was no meeting that took place. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what All meeting right. are you talking about. All right. All As right, I've Chair. said in my introductory <laughs> report, we we right. we we then <laughs> it's H O D. I don't know. <laughs> All right, sorry, Chair. Um, Which meeting are you ask... talking about? H O D. No, sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. I just postponed. Chair. I I just made a a mistake. Um, you are telling I so many things. H O D. Yeah. It's a sign My apologies. Okay. My apologies, Chair. Look, that's why I said you need to take us through if you want the house acting house chair to do that you, you will uh, because in an ideal situation the MEC was going to do that now that the MEC is not there I think you have got also full mandate to represent him that's why I was ending over to you okay and thank you chair. With us what has been your arrangement with the acting chair of the house who should do what I think you have assigned each other responsibilities okay well, thank you very much, Chair. The, the report was sent and it went through the hands of the MEC and the acting chair. I would then ask Mr. Stofile to load the presentation and Mr. take the committee through. Mr. Chairperson? Mr. Hello, Chairperson. Before I, fight, before I fight with the parliamentary communications uh, section, all the time when the speakers speak, can you make sure that you put on your videos like what the chairperson is doing now. I'm also trying to raise it for those others that are going to speak in this meeting. We need to make sure that all the time your, your video is on. You can mute it when you are not recognized to speak. The same thing with your microphone colleagues. Uh, and then the other issue that I want to put up front if you want to speak, don't just shout at the chair. Uh, there is an icon that allows you to raise your hand on the chat. I think we've been doing this for quite some time now. And then if then your gadget doesn't allow you to do that, write a text, at least with the text, with the chat, you can utilize the chat. I'll read the, the chat continually. I'll be able to recognize you from the chat. No shouting. Ne? Because others get upset when they shout because we also then, uh, it's, it's a bit disruptive. So can we do that? We make sure that we switch off, we put all our microphones and videos if we're not recognized to speak because we might want to do other things. And then as a chair, I see your movements, yes, yeah. So we do it in that fashion, like what the HOD has done now, everybody will follow suit. Over to you, HOD. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. For, for, sorry for not uh, switching the video on. Um, I was saying, Chair, I would then ask with your permission, Mr. Stoffville, to take the committee through with the presentation. With your permission, Chair, can I hand over to Mr. Stoffville? Thank you, HOD. Uh, I'm trying to share the screen. I'm not sure whether it's, uh, it's showing. When, you, when you're doing that, show your face. I'll do that just now. The screen is showing. Just go a bit up. I'm not sure whether my face is available, Chairperson. It's showing. Go a bit, go a bit up first. You go up a bit, it's showing. But the way you are seated, is either it's a cell phone or whatever, I don't know. It seems to be a bit lower. Let me switch on the light. 
Is it not better now, Chairperson? You off, but at least this is a presentation. I hope when you respond to questions, you'll be visible. Is it not showing now, Chairperson? That's much better. Proceed. Uh, this is the presentation, honorable members. Let me just put it on slideshow. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, it was supposed to be done by Ngosi Langamavuso. This is our presentation. Uh, this is our presentation outline, Chairperson. We'll be talking, we'll be giving the introduction and then the general statistics of the 2020 summer season, the briefing on the 13 initiation facilities, number of initiates that were discharged with injuries, support that was given to the bereaved families, report on the consequence management. Uh, Chaperson, this uh, outline is based on the questions that were, were presented to us by the committee. So we are responding according to our, our presentation is based on that. As we have introduction, we are saying the Eastern Cape report for summer 2020 initiation season was true was sent to the National House. It was submitted to the Portfolio Committee. Upon interrogation of the said report, the Portfolio Committee needed a detailed report on in relation to 13 initiate facilities. Support was given to the, you know, the support that was given to the bereaved initiates that were discharged with injuries and report on consequence management. As, de as detailed report was submitted, the preliminary focus, the primary focus on, on the report shall be focused or shall be confined on the above mentioned matters. This is basically what I've just indicated on chairperson. On the statistics of the 2020 summer initiation season, this is what we have picked up. We can say chairperson that the boys that were pre-screened for initiation were 8,069. The boys that were tested for COVID-19 chairperson were, were 7,389. Out of those, the boys that tested positive for COVID-19 were 310. Legal initiation schools that were registered were 3,613. Illegal initiation schools were 300. On legal initiates, we recorded 7,466. Illegal initiates were 3,281. Total number of boys that were initiated, that is including both legal and illegal, were 10,747. Boys treated on spot, in this, ca this case, uh, Chairperson refers to boys that were visited on the, on the initiation schools and then were found to be having some challenges and then they were treated right there. And then boys admitted to hospitals were 39. Boys who suffered penal amputation were four, and then the boys that... Uh, passed on during the initiation season with 13. And then now on the, on the report on 13 fatalities that happened during the season, in Alfredo municipality, that is Bizana and Dabangulu, we had two deaths. The, both boys were illegal. And then the reasons or the causes for deaths were dehydration and aspiration. And then there was only one who had COVID-19 complications. In our time, Chaperson, we had the four deaths that took place at uh, Flex, excuse me, in Flexstaff, at Nailene, and King Sabata Dalinia. Actually, three, I said four, it's three, Chaperson, and KSD. The causes for the death were septicemia, septicemia and dehydration. With the third one, Chaperson, the cause of death was not known because the boy passed on, and then immediately before the matter can be investigated, the parents buried the initiate. All of them were illegal. In Buffalo City Municipality, we had two deaths. The one took place in a place called Haven Hills, and then another one in a place called uh, Highway Gardens. Both were legal. But in this case, the other one, the post-mortem, was not conclusive as to what was the cause of death. And then the other one was a uh, COVID-19 complication. In Amatole District Municipality, in a place called Aiduja, we had one death there. The cause of death was dehydration and the initiate was legal. In Krisani Municipality, here at Chaperson, we had the case of three initiates who were shot in the initiation school. 
the matter, well, they were they passed on while they were still in the initiation school, so they were reported as death of initiates, even though their death was not linked to initiation. And then we had one death in Gonzo, it was as a result of septicemia. We've got one death at Enokum Kijima, it was as a result of pulmonary embolism. And then the COVID results, they were conducted and then they were found to be negative. Both, all of them were legal, Chaperson. And then on the issue of initiates discharge with injuries, we started Chaperson by picking up a, a report of initiates that was, were admitted to hospital. And then as I've indicated in the statistics, we had 39 initiates that were admitted to different health facilities. And the following is the breakdown. In the OR Tambo District Municipality, we had 16 admissions. They were at eight at Tanzibo Hospital, two in Umtata Regional Hospital, one at Mali Zombethe, and then two at St. Barnabas Hospital. The, admit, the reason for admission with, on these uh, initiates was septic wounds and assault. In Krisani, we had 14 admissions. We had six admissions at All Saints, three admissions at Kofi Vabo Hospital, two admissions at Wewe Hospital, and one admission at Ewe Hospital. And then we had the one at Glen Gray Hospital. Reason for admissions was septic wounds and gangrenous penis. In Buffalo City, we had five who were admitted at Frey Hospital. The admission, the reason for admissions were Bosch circumcision, that is ulceration of the tip of the glands and septic wounds. In Amatole, we had two admissions at Tafalo Faith Hospital. Admission reasons were epileptic fits and acute respiratory disease syndrome. In Alfredo, we had two admissions at St. Patrick Hospital. Reason for admissions were septic wounds. As a brief summary on that, uh, Chaperson was saying all 39 admitted initiates were treated at the above named hospital and discharged within a period of, of the season, except two initiates with burn wounds in both hands and gangrenous penis. And the initiate who had burn wound on in Umtata Regional Hospital stayed longer than two weeks as he was undergoing skin graft and physiotherapeutic session before discharge. Initiate with gangrenous penis at the hospital undergone skin graft before discharge. We had four penal amputation cases of which two had partial amputation of the glands penis. And then we are saying, Chaperson, no initiate was discharged with injuries, except those who had the amputations, because those were permanent injuries that were linked to the process of circumcision, but others were admitted, they were admitted and then they were released when they have healed. And then coming to the support that was provided to the bereaved families, the bereaved families and co-initiates of the deceased as were subjected to trauma counseling and the Department of Social Development as one of the stakeholders participating in the customary male initiation program is responsible for that. The following re reflect the support that was provided. Here, what we are doing as an indicator, we are dealing with a number of families with deceased initiates who received psychosocial support. In Buffalo City Municipality, no service was rendered due to COVID-19 restrictions. And then the aftercare services were, was going to be rendered. But I think the, the colleague from the social development will indicate whether they've proceeded with that or not. The same happened again at another one at Amalinda. And then at Ingobo and Ingobo and Gondra administrative area, psychosocial support services was provided to the family of Mangai at Chapile village on the 10th of January 2021. The interventions were done after the death of Initiate. During the course of the intervention, family relocated to Joubek, Johannesburg, where it was where they were residing. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, there were few initiates during the summer season. So what happened even when the Department of Social Development was still were proceeding with the intervention, but as the initiative passed on was not from the Eastern Cape, when they left, they couldn't follow with the matter. This refers to the initiate that passed on at Ngobo as it was reported in the statistics. In Port St. John's at a place called Dafuf, where psychosocial support was provided and trauma briefing was done to the female of the initiate. And then this was also done with the awareness campaign on safe circumcision. In a place called Mzenge and Kuka, that is at Ingoza Hill in Flagstaff, 
psychosocial support was provided and the debriefing was provided to the cohorts of the initiates. And then the, the, they are still continuing with the psycho, psychosocial support there. At Insegaye, two at Gokoha, this is a place, Chaperson, where there were three initiates who were shot in the initial initiation school. Social workers at Zomo Service Office conducted psychosocial support services to all families of the three deceased. And two sessions were con conducted. And then there's still a continuous sub professional support in the form of counseling to these families of the deceased. And Elundini, in a place called Magazela, no social support was rendered to the families of the deceased. The case was forwarded to the area coordinator in Elundini. The area coordinator of social development, the area coordinator of the program was to visit the family on the 6th of August. So this is still a visit that is pending. Uh, Chaperson, that is all about the support that was provided to the members of the deceased families. And then now we come to consequence management. The consequence management in the customary mail initiation program is in the form of arrest that are affected to those who transgress legal prescripts related to the program. The following are the cases that were registered in 2020. Here, Chaperson, we are going to present the cases that we had in 2020, but we'll move over to cases that took place in 2018 because we couldn't get the cases for 2019, but we do have cases for 2020. So I'll start with the cases of 2020, summer initiation season. Here we've got uh, Lusigisigi case number 13 of 2020, where we had no arrest. The, the charge was unlawful circumcision. The matter is still under investigation. Again, in Lusigisigi, there was a registered case number 103 of 2020. The case was uh, of unlawful circumcision, but the parents chairperson of the initiate decided to withdraw the case, and then the matter was withdrawn as a result of that. And then we've got a case in Nibi, but this is Buffalo City in East London of the unlawful circumcision. The case was taken to court. It's still pending there. Again, in Devana, which is also in Buffalo City, two arrests were effected there. The charge was a charge of unlawful circumcision. The docket even here is, 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 is in court. Another endeavor, another case again, where two people were arrested. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter is still under investigation. And then for the three initiates that passed on in Tomo, we've got Tomo case number eight of one 2020. Three people were arrested. The charge is the charge of murder. The matter was remanded to court for the 6th, 14th of June, 2021. We're still waiting for the outcome. In the Somerset East, uh, where, which is the Sarah Bartman, there was a case that was registered, which is case number 82 of 1, 2021. No arrest was effected there. The charge was the charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter is still in, under investigation. There was an inquiry that was registered in Kabeka Police Station, which is Nelson Mandela Metro. Ultimately, after the inquiry, a case, a case was opened. No arrest has been affected yet. The charge was the charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter is still under investigation. Under Dangan Village case number 123 of 12, 2020, one arrest was done. The charge was the charge of unlawful circumcision. The case was closed and filed with at the station. Again, in Dangan Village, case 117 was opened, 117 of 12, 2020, no arrest there. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. Currently, the case is still registered as undetected. Another case, again, at Dangan Village, case number 96 of 12, 2020, no arrest. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The case was closed as undetected. Flagstaff case, which Flagstaff is over time, when I was a local municipality, one arrest was effected there. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter was then was remanded to, to May 2027. Under Flagstaff case number 40 of 12, 2020, no arrest was effected. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The case was closed as undetected. Again, Flagstaff, 78, 12 of 2020, no arrest was effected. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision, closed and detected. Willowville case number 87 of 12 was also registered. No arrest was, was done there. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The target was closed and filed with the station. 
under Blue Water Bay, which is under Amatole, Great Kai, no arrest was effected there. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter is still under investigation. Moi Plus case 11 of 12, 2020, again, that there was no arrest. The charge was charge of unlawful circumcision. The matter is still under investigation. Sandane case 64 of 12, 2020, no arrest, unlawful circumcision. The case was withdrawn. And then, Chairperson, coming to the cases of 2018, here we've got uh, the case of Ndabangulu, case number 210. Here we had uh, the cause of death, the, what, what, the status of the case, because these are old cases. It's an inquest. It has not yet been finalized. The cause of death, there was, it is alleged that the deceased was having hallucination, was talking to himself, dehydration, and was sus and uh, was suspected of they didn't finish that but there's still pm results that are still pending in libor the case number seven of 12 was opened the initiate died of died in hospital of aspiration and pneumonia even there there was an inquest in again in libor i think this is the same it's, it's the same case Chapeston, i'm sorry and then in lusigisiki there's a case number two of 12 the cause of death that, that was, was reported, it is alleged that the disease lost his energy, refused to eat food and drink water. Then he collapsed, he died on the spot. Again, there's an inquest. In Tanzania, case number 54 of 12, 2018, it is alleged that the disease was suffering from asthma and he died in an initiation school. Even then, there's an inquest. Gunobi, case number 59 of 12, 2018, it is alleged that the initiation, the initiation had caught fire and the initiation was burned to death. Even there, there's inquest. In Queenstown, case number 112 of 12 was opened. It is alleged that the deceased lost his mind. Dehydration was suspected. And then the post-mortem results are still pending. It's an inquest case. In Maluti, case 46 of 12, 2018, it is alleged the deceased was complaining about running stomach, he vomited only on the on the early of the second days, a green substance came out and he never stopped up until passing out, passing on, and the PM results are still pending. It's an inquest case. In Moldino, the disease was complaining about chest pains and shortness of breath. He died in the initiation school. The postmortem results are still pending. It's an inquest case. In Lady Frey, case 45 of 12, 2018 was opened. It is alleged that the deceased was complaining about stomach ache. He died in an initiation school. Again, an inquest was opened. In Queenstown, case 133 of 12, 2018 was opened. It is alleged that the deceased was had the confusion or having confusion and hallucinations. The postmortem results, even they are still pending. Uh, it's an inquest case. In Lady Frey, case number 45 of 12 was opened. The cause of death was he was complaining about the stomach ache and he died at an initiation school. At Chapesin, I think I, but there's a problem with the slide that was cut, but all these cases are having, are pending because of inquest. They are all inquest. I think South will be able to explain to us as to when they are having an inquest, what is going to be the end result of that? Again, in Lady Frey, case 133 of 12 was opened. The cause of death, it is alleged that the disease was has having confusions and they are still pending the PM results. At Inyebiba Police Station, case 73 of 12 was opened. It is alleged that the disease was on his way to the river to wash themselves. He collapsed and died on the spot. No foul play was suspected, but the PM results are still pending. In Butterworth, case 128 of 12, 2018 was opened. The disease was complaining about chest pains before he passed on. And the post-mortem results, even in this case, are still pending. In Motherwell, the case 273 of 12 was opened. It is alleged that the disease passed on while he was sleeping without any complaints. In Queenstown, case 119 of 1, 2019, was opened. It is alleged that the deceased was complaining about stomach stomach cramp before he passed on. In Elliot, it is alleged that the deceased passed died at Frey Hospital. 
it was suspected of septic wound and dehydration. That is all uh, Chairperson on the consequence management and that is the end of the report. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, for the presentation. Uh, can I then ask Inkosi Mavuso if is ready to add something or say something as the chairperson of the PICC. Okay, thank you. I think chair. you are already. Uh, can I ask and uh, can we remove the, the presentation from the screen, please? Can we do that so that we can allow the visitor space to be visible fully on the screen, please. Padestofile, remove your presentation on the screen. Yes, Chairperson, I'm trying. I'm not sure where am I missing the point now. Mm, can't be here forever. <laughs> Maybe there's some support on that side who can assist, but I don't know why now it's doing this. I'm trying. I'm, is it still there, Chairperson? It's still here. I Finally, it's gone. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Hey, thank you, Chair. I think Mr. Stofile has covered everything. I will just await questions. Thank you. Oh, that's what, what the visitor can say that uh, is covered by the presentation of uh, Mr. Stofile. I want to get clarity between the NPA team amongst the two of yourselves, colleagues, uh, Advocate Pangalale and Advocate Ndwela. We got your presentation. We want to understand who's going to put in that presentation, who's going to present on the NPA. Chairperson. Oh, it's you. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, I want to can see you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I you can, can see me. See. I can hear oh. you, but I can't see you. Oh, let me try and uh, make myself uh, visible. <laughs> okay, advocate. Hey. Is the I new normal? Is, I wonder what is wrong with my. Uh, Come to see me now. No. Not yet, advocate. Not yet. Uh, where must I click? So, can you, can you just uh, give me one moment? Uh, there is someone that, that, that can uh, operate this for me. Just one moment. Hey, I will just uh, call it. It's just next door. Next door. Yes, yes, yes. Just a moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Typical of field workers. Sometimes, chairperson, we slide the camera and close it off, unaware. Mm. So unaware, some, yeah. So I, I did slide it now. I get off and I slide it on, and it's so there's a slide on the laptop mm -hmm. that you always yeah, need to might, check whether it's might be on. Beginning to deal with that. Okay, now maybe there he is, like we can see now that's so you're helping him. They're helping him now. Born before technology, an hour. No, advocates are field workers. You must understand them as so, well. And where are you? you who's speaking? We can't see you too. There you go. I'm here, it's a technology is not an issue to me. <laughs> So it's half open the camera if you can see the camera of the now. Thank you. Yeah, DMS is excels on this. Hmm? 
I, I had to learn the hard way too. So I had my own mistakes. <laughs> and you remember when I was in one meeting with you and I was wearing a vest. And because I had spilled coffee on me, I took off the shirt not knowing the camera was on. <laughs> Luckily, I was good. <laughs> hey. Why are you wearing a vest? No, 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 no. I used coffee spilled on my shirt. I had to okay. take it off. I didn't know that the camera was on. There's, there's an advocate here. Hello, Chapizi. Welcome. You see, you've learned something as well. You too today. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Thanks, advocate. Advocate. Thanks for your <laughs> patience, uh, Chapizi. <laughs> But okay, I, don't know if my, I don't know if my colleague, uh, uh, Advocate Pangalela, will start with his uh, presentation. Mm. Or, uh, uh, now, that we are are... Here, now that you are here, you can start so that we don't have the glitch. Advocate Pangalele will also be practicing, but I think maybe Advocate Pangalele is better than you, knows how to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> let me start. Uh, I prepared my presentation. Uh, let, can I open my document? Yes. I think let me share it. There you go. This one you never Thank had you. difficulty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't memorize uh, according to the IT guys. They trained me in this one. Uh, I was asked to compile uh, this uh, for last year, for 2020. Oh, my blood is dying. Let me just, just hold on. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Uh, in our region, our region covers uh, the Gramstown, the Port Elizabeth, the East London, and Bishop. Mm -hmm. While, uh, while uh, Mr. Pangalele will be dealing with the former Trans Sky uh, side, because it's too big. Uh, in our region, uh, we didn't have uh, any death that we can trust someone with, as my report will show. Uh, the first, uh, if you look at our cases, we received this request from SAPS. I don't know if uh, I just want to see it, if maybe we, uh, I did not get it right. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's going to be fine. Uh, we have a second village case. It's, it's an unlawful circumcision. And mm -hmm. that case is, is on the roll. Let me see, I just want to see whether it's on the roll. Oh, I can move this on this side, okay. The target was declined, to, uh, we declined to, to prosecute that taken village case. The target was not after the death of the initiate uh, and uh, the inquest was opened. What happened is uh, this initiate, uh, the case was opened because he was a circumcised while when he was still uh, younger than the age that is uh, uh, acquired legally. And uh, he died before the case uh, was uh, put uh, for trial. So, and uh, his death was not related to the initiation uh, uh, that was performed. Uh, another one was that also from the Tigan, the Tigan village, it was an, an inquest. Che, when you talk about inquests, uh, we received che, this document from SAPS as an inquest, but after reading, we noticed that once we notice that uh, someone can face at the music, we change that from, uh, from the inquest to murder or criminal homicide, depending on the degree of uh, the but I mean, uh, the participation of such person in the death of that initiate. This one, uh, the 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 village cast one on nine twelve of uh, uh, I saw this uh, from also from the list of Mr. Stofile. It was also the in his presentation. But now I'm going to give the status of those cases that uh, Mr. Stofile showed. Uh, and and, was, and uh, advocate, 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 and Am I pronouncing yes, your name properly? Ntwela, how do you pronounce your surname? Oh, it's Ntelwa. Ntelwa, I'm coming from the other part. <laughs> I know. 
And yes, your presentation, we don't have it. We only have Advocate Pangalele's one. Is okay. there a way that it can be quickly emailed to the Secretary of the Committee as you are presenting? Can anyone I have, email? Me? I have emailed it to uh, the lady who sent the invite just this morning. During, Maybe during, that's why I said. This morning, okay. Yes, she will check yes, her yes, Sorry about that. And when we progress, okay. The one that we thank registered you. was here. Yeah. She can check thank that you, she will then send to the group. Proceed then. Thank you, sir. Uh, sure. the, the, the death of the initiative and the, and the decision to prosecute depend on the cause of death. Uh, in this target of this one of the Kan village, uh, the, the cause of death was was a uh, natural causes, and uh, on the result of the target, uh, it has been is, is it that uh, the feather decision be carried? And I queried that target uh, first and foremost. The doctor who worked at the personal term examination made a finding in the space for the cause of death that the cause of death is. Scissors and uh, still under investigation, and some some uh, specimen were taken to the lab. We are waiting for the results. Therefore, the investigation is still uh, continuing in that case. Uh, then we have the the, the Dagan village uh, 117 is an illegal investigation, and uh, the problem we are having here, uh, no board ha has yet been uh, arrested because they they can trace. The guy who the, the man who performed the, the circumcision on the initiate. And also, we are having difficulty because these initiates also don't uh, cooperate with the, I mean, uh, with the police. So, we have no other alternative but to withdraw in, I mean, in most, I mean, in most uh, occasions, especially in these illegal circumcisions. Once now the boy is healed, they don't pay any, any attention to the case and you end up withdrawing those cases. As you see, the one of uh, also the Tigran village uh, on the PCM that is 96, close as a, as a, as an detected because the suspect is not known. Snell Park also there is no suspect. In this one, uh, if you see that Snell Park one is an inquest reported by Ikangata and father to have had hal uh, hallucinations and uh, refused food and water. Uh, this continued to the 3rd of January this year. Health official was only informed on the 3rd this year. On arrival at uh, to five, at to five, the initiate was already passed on. No chronic conditions, uh, uh, I mean, or a uh, chronic uh, medication known before his death, advised to take COVID tests and forensic investigation. According to the medical records uh, found in the BOMA, the initiate was seen by a doctor, I think there was a, there is that medical officer. Uh, therefore, it's still under investigation. And the, the last update, that is get the, the, the turnaround in that target is the 4th of, of August. We'll see what will be our, I mean, our quarries yield. Once uh, there is something, we'll, we, I mean, we'll address someone because we've been informed by our doctor here that hallucinations sometimes- Today is the fifth. Advocates, today's defeat. What is the status? Because you put the date of we compiled that report. Long we compiled the report. Uh, uh, the one. And, and now we are waiting for the police to bring that together since we have the deadline yesterday. So we are still okay. waiting. We haven't uh, got that that, that together uh, this morning since the, okay. the, the deadline was uh, yesterday. So okay. once so. And I was saying, we were informed by one of our doctors that hallucinations uh, from the initiates sometimes is caused by dehydration. That, mm. that is why we, we are involving the medical opinion when it comes to the hallucinations. We don't take them lightly. We want to get the medical opinion once there is a, there is a sign of hallucination before the initiate died to, to, to check whether the hydration is not 
in place in that, I mean, in the death of but that. On, on, that, on that column, I think there's something missing because one wants to understand on the last uh, paragraph, according to the medical records found in the BOMA, yeah. the initiate was seen by a medical practitioner. And I think it was going to proceed to say maybe what were the findings, oh, but isn't that you are saying maybe yes. on the updated file, this is the information that's going to come? It's going to come, yes. And the, yes. we are... We are, we are waiting for that to get. Maybe the, the the police are on their way now to bring me that 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 in, uh, that information. The then beauty we'll about it, Saps is here. They will be able to talk to this. They are here. To talk to them. Yes, I think some. Yes. Will, I mean, maybe we'll yeah. give uh, some uh, some uh, indication in that one. Yeah. So in the in the in that uh, in Yibiba one, the new sixty eight of twelve under full circumcision, no victim, and the victim did not want to cooperate. We are still uh, still under under investigation. We asked the police to trace uh, to trace this boy because it was said that she left the by province. So we are trying to because we do, we do, we don't want to leave these cases uh, like that because now we are facing a problem to prosecute these unlawful uh, these unlawful because we don't get cooperation from our witnesses. And uh, in court, you are as good as your witness. If your witness is uh, is uh, shying away, you might as well not, not enroll that case until someone really shows some uh, some, some seriousness. We are working hand in hand with SAPS to, to try and uh, get these cases uh, finalized. The Nevada one also is a circumcision of the unlawful circumcision. That, uh, this one, we have re enrolled it. Uh, we enrolled it on the 13th of April this year. So it's still uh, in the district court. I don't, I mean, I didn't get the, the next date of, uh, of the postponement, but I can show you Chairperson, that it is on the road, that one. Uh, coming to the Devana 62 of 12, no arrest, therefore we close that, that target. Then, this was the list that was supplied at first. Has now I had other additional cases that I happened to collect from the stations around us. Uh, Mr. Stoffler did mention some of these Bacon Bay cases. And all I'm going to do is, is to give the status of uh, in respect of those cases. Starting with the Bacon Bay 123 of, of, of 110, we close that case uh, on the 13th of July. This year, reason uh, we don't know the person. The this this accused person is not known. We don't know him, and the, and the police are still trying to look as to who is this Tamija and this. Uh, so nobody knows them so far. But we we close the target, but not the investigation. So it's, they are still. I mean, the police are still trying trying to trace that. Uh, uh, Surgeon. On the begun the, the Bay 118 of 10, 2020, also under uh, a subsidian, we close uh, that target. And also, we don't know this damage and uh, the Zee. Also, begun Bay unlawful circumcision, also, this one was closed. It's also by the same uh, surgeon. That is, uh, we don't have his full names. Then the Beacon Bay 01 of 07, 2021, this was the new one. This one is a new case, is still under the question. We could read on the 4th of uh, August for the statement of the victim to be obtained and filed, as well as the JDH of the victim to be filed in the target. So we, we have, still, this one is still under decision. We, are, we have queried the, 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 the target. So we, maybe the police will, uh, on the, on that 4th of August, uh, that is uh, yesterday, they will bring with other targets that have that deadline of the 4th. The, the, the Beacon Bay ones, 126 of 10 of 2020, is closed and we decline to prosecute on the 13th of July as the resident officer filed a statement indicating that the victim who is supposed to bring light as to who the suspect is in this matter cannot be traced. Under the Beacon Bay 130, 10 of 2020, also under uh, circumcision, 
we declined to prosecute. Also on the 13th, it was is the same person that is uh, cannot be traced, uh, and, the, and the witnesses are not cooperating. Uh, under the Cambridge 165, 12 of 2019, uh, we have a professional withdrawn this case on the 1st of July this year. It was on the road for trial. And there are two people, I mean, uh, who were facing prosecution in this case. It's one of those uh, serious ones because uh, I think uh, this helped us a lot in this case because after we arrested this single guy, uh, we didn't have much death the following year. At least that, that stance of arresting that guy and oppose his belligerent worked very well for us. Uh, so, but this case now has been uh, provisionally withdrawn on the 1st of July with the instruction to be carried out by the investigator that is filing proof that the surgeon is a registered international surgeon. We need that before we, because we want to prosecute him under that, uh, prosecu I mean, uh, circumcision boys that uh, under 18. Konobi Kas, 110 of June uh, 2021, also under the we have closed that target, we, we have declined to go to prosecute with some queries, and we are waiting if those queries will be addressed uh, uh, because the, 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 the deadline was also the 4th of August. Uh, they're going to be 33 July uh, 2021. Uh, it's, it's a new case. It's an inquest. And uh, if you look at the how the disease died here, on the 10th of July, the disease, uh, one Shabula Lajan, who was initiated at the initiation school, so, uh, at the homely forest. I think Mr. Tuffle did mention this uh, place. It is alleged by his father, Juan Lunga, because of that on the 10th of July, he visited the uh, Iboma, where the, where, the, where the deceased and his other son, uh, Kozo, were housed and found the deceased complaining about asthma pipe. I mean, his uh, asthma pipe, which was finished. According to the father, the disease was asthmatic from birth. The deceased father rushed to, to the shop to buy the deceased a new asthma pipe. He brought it and thereafter left the Iboma. The father was called to the Iboma and found the deceased having difficulty in breathing. The ambulance was called and he was certified dead at the Iboma. We are, we have credited this to it because we suspect probably uh, that someone along the line uh, let that boy down by not uh, uh, bringing his full medication. So someone will answer to that. So we, are, we have created that target, and I'm sure once, once, we, once we complete the machine, the, 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 the nurse, the parent, and also the surgeon will have to answer to, the, to that boy's death. Uh, Coming to the other cases that we have, the, the, the Dujua case, I think uh, it was under those guys. I will let Mr. Pangal deal with that one. Uh, the police supplied us with that one. Also, the Willow Vale case is also under Mr. Pangal's presentation. Blue Water is our case. It's of, of, it's, um, uh, the, the, the Blue Water cast 301 of 2021 is, is also new. The, Trial date uh, they was set for the for 5 of March, but now the update, the latest update is made on the 4th of, of, of August. That is the yesterday, the, 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 the deadline. On this matter is that on the 18th of March, which was the date for trial in the matter, they accused Linda Anne Zondani failed to appear before court and the warrant for his arrest was authorized. Uh, and as a and as child with limited effect, they accused is therefore present at large. So we would have a, have a date with that case on that day, but and I chose it did not come. So we're, we're waiting for the police to arrest him. Maybe the police will just shed light as to what, if they have managed to. Then we have the, the Moe Plus case also under us, also, also is an unlawful uh, circumcision. Uh, and it's agitated. That is now the accused in this matter. According to the latest update from the visiting officer, Kosa uh, Bindai, what is her? Uh, Covering the progress in detecting the culprit is that the victim is reported to be in Jobe to seek employment and he didn't leave a forwarding address. So we are facing those uh, problems, Che. And that is not ours. Che, I'm going to 
as you see, the, these slides are dealing with the 2020 cases. There are cases that, uh, as Mr. Fila did highlight that, cases of 2018, they are still on the roll. Uh, I just want also to give some, uh, some updates into, into them. I have the Queenstown uh, case. Uh, there are choose, there are two I choose. There is the surgeon and the nurse. They initially died from starvation. The matter is on the roll in the Queenstown Magistrate Court. And now it's, it's coming for trial on the 22nd of September, 2021 for trial. So we put charges of Kalbi uh, 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 homicide against the surgeon and the nurse because they are responsible for that bomb. Uh, another one is also in Queenstown, class 169 or one of 19. Uh, we have arrested also uh, the surgeon and the, the nurse. It is a diet after a long illness without reporting to medical officer. The matter is on the roll in Queenstown Magistrate Court. Also, it's coming on the 2nd of September for trial in, in the district court, I mean, in the regional court. Uh, another one is Queenstown, also again, Queenstown 1 and 3, 12 of 2018. Uh, it's also called the homicide. They initially died from the dehydration. So the, the nurse and the surgeon are facing the music. Uh, we, are, we have charged both, both of them of negligent killing of that boy. Uh, we, we have another one in Moldino. We, here we have uh, three accused. Why we, we have three? Is the surgeon, the nurse, and the parent. The nurse died from dehydration and aspirations. He complained of difficulty in breathing for seven days but no medical help was sought. Instead, the father preferred to use his traditional healer. The matter is on the roll in the Mojina Major Court. It's coming on the 2nd of August. So I didn't get the latest as to what happened on that date. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I will make a follow-up and uh, update Mr. Stofi about this one and give him maybe before this presentation is over, I will get that the next update in this matter. So, President, that is my report. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the report, uh, advocates. Can your other colleague then load his so that we just take yours out of the screen? Ah, you have been very efficient on doing that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And then let's allow your other colleague to also load is on the trans guy side, former trans guy side. Advocate Pangalel, where are you? Can we first see you? As you are busy loading. It's quiet. Where are you, advocate? You need to, yeah, you are here. Advocate T. Pangalen. He's, he's, he's on mute. Yeah, he's mute. You are muted. Can I mute your microphone? Good morning, Chaperson. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Um, I'm trying to load. Or can someone uh, help me from your side just to help to load my report? Because you send it to the secretariat, they will definitely be able to assist you. That's what they are doing. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Good morning to everyone. Um, let, let me, the report is in front of you. But perhaps before I get to the report, I think it's important to highlight some challenges that we've experienced 
Can so you first share, as... share with us which areas do you operate on quickly? Uh, I'm based in the DPP's office in Tata. Mm. Yes, and uh, uh, we... Which areas, which municipalities? The, that is the former uh, Transkai. Mm. That will be part of the Amatole. Yes. Uh, uh, Musa area. Yes. Uh, O.R. Tambo, mm. et cetera. Okay. Yes. But perhaps, uh, Madam Chair, it's important, uh, you know, uh, to highlight some challenges that we have experienced throughout our operation. As uh, my colleague uh, on the other side of the CHI has indicated, you know, we, for effective and efficient prosecution, we need cooperation of the witnesses. And the witnesses and the customers uh, in this regard will be our victims uh, and the witnesses that have witnessed uh, those uh, incidents. But what we've also noticed is that uh, there is a, uh, strong uh, resistance from the community uh, in so far as uh, cooperation with the police uh, in prosecution of these cases. Once a case has been opened, for instance, you know, and uh, because of underage circumcision or circumcision without parental uh, consent, what we've noticed once the boy has recovered, the initiate has recovered from his circumcision, uh, the tendency is a reluctance on the part of him to cooperate, to get the necessary JDA that we we'll need for the purpose of court process. The same goes with the parents, even those uh, that have already Initiated. What, what, uh, what is JDA advocate Pangalela? The JDA I'm referring to is a medical uh, report compiled by a medical doctor to prove. Yes. We use this to prove uh, that uh, indeed circumcision took place as per the allegation. Okay. Yeah. Now it becomes a challenge when an initiate has recovered and uh, expresses uh, 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 reluctance to cooperate in getting this jade aid from the medical, relevant medical center. It becomes a problem and as such, the, most of these cases end up being withdrawn uh, on the basis that there is no cooperation from the part of these witnesses. Now, what I've done uh, in this side of the CHI, that is the former trans CHI, uh, I'm more focused on uh, where they are inquests uh, reported. In other words, there are deaths at the initiation uh, schools. As you would look at number one, Lusiki Siki case 121 of seven, uh, 2021, the scene there was at a uh, Gangata area. The allegation is that a 17 year old deceased initiated, the late younger Makakana died at initiation school, both in Nibi and traditional nurse were illegal and unregistered. The known in Nibi, Temba Makupeni, commonly known as Boloha. What is an Ingevi? What is an Ingevi? What is an? Ingevi. Oh, Ingevi. <laughs> <laughs> we call it in Tosa Ingevi. That is a traditional surgeon. Okay. You yeah, see, traditional said the something. one who, who conducts the operation of circumcision. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So Proceed. you will get used to in Libi and the Ikankata is the traditional nurse. I see. So in this case of Lusiki Sik, a warrant for his arrest was authorized. The police are still tracing for his whereabouts. We are still also waiting for the post-mortem uh, report in this case. You go to Lusikisiki case 
122 of 7, 2021, the scene there was at Mkungwana, Lowan Tafufu. That is the area of Lusikisiki. The case was reported uh, to SAPS by the circumcision forum uh, of the area operating in that area. The deceased was about to be buried by the family uh, on the basis of natural cause. Uh, and, uh, before, uh, and when the SAPS intervened. You, you see, in this case, the family sought to bury and uh, procured a medical, I mean, a death certificate from home affairs without involvement, without invitation and involvement uh, of, the, of, the, of the police. And the, this was spotted by the local forum operating there and before the burial uh, took place by the family. The inquest docket was opened by SAPS the deceased there, the initiate was 14 years, uh, the late Sese Tum Dunyelwa. Suspect not yet identified as the deceased family is refusing to disclose uh, his identity. They do not want police involvement. You see, that's, that's another challenge here. You know, the, the, there are certain families you know, within our community who really do not want police involvement. In these cases, they they see the police presence as interference into their custom. That is a challenge that we experience, especially in this area. We still are waiting for the post mortem report in that case. Then you have Lusiki Siki case one thirty of seven twenty twenty one. The scene there, the area is Mantusini area. Death at a local hospital reported by initiation forum uh, to SAPS. Again, you will see the, uh, the activities of the initiation forum, which we congratulate their involvement. Otherwise, the police would not have uh, known again about this Lusikisiki case. But due to their activism uh, on the ground, they spotted this and brought it to the attention of uh, the, the SAPS. No visible injuries noticed on the deceased body. Statement from other initiates indicate that the deceased complained of thirst at the Iboma or initiation school there. It is reported that uh, the deceased drank Imbola uh, and thereafter experienced a severe stomach ache. I, I don't know whether Madam Chair must again uh, interpret or translate what it means, Imbola can do that, do that. <laughs> then at the end of this, we'll be so empowered. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the, the imbola is what they normally uh, smear on their bodies. Uh, hence, they look very nice out there in white. If you understand, if you've seen an initiate at yes, an initiation yes, school. Yes. yes, those pictures of white initiates, yes. Now, what happened in this case, he, it is alleged that he drank that Imbola and thereafter experienced a severe stomach ache. He was given traditional herbs. Once again, people of the area really believes in these traditional herbs before your Western intervention, medical intervention. They first uh, use their traditional herbs. There is indication that uh, they were denied water. You see, that's the area of my interest mm. here. And mm. Ebola was the only fluid available. You, you yep. see, that's the, that is the area of my interest. Uh, but uh, the problem is that I'm still waiting for the uh, outcome of the post-mortem. Because uh, the, the statements we received from the other initiates that it would appear and they all indicate that uh, there was denial or deprival, deprival of water. Now, hence this initiate uh, resorted to the drinking of this fluid, Imbola. Now you proceed to uh, Esbeleni case 2701-2021. It's an inquest case. One 20 year old initiate deceased following complaint on his knee. Traditional medication intervention was sought by the family. 
According to the post-mortem report, the deceased died of pulmonary embolism, uh, that swollen inflamed thigh. Um, apparently, according to the PM report, the doctor explains that it occurs when a blood clot from any of the peripheral uh, blood vessels in the body circulate, circulates and blocks one of the major blood vessels in the lungs, resulting in reduced oxygen supply. No one could be criminally held responsible for the death of the initiate. A uh, docket referred to magistrate for inquest and closure. Circumcision took place on the 22nd of uh, December and the date of uh, death is the 9th of January, 2021. Even according to second initiate, there was nothing wrong except this strange uh, development on the thigh of the deceased. Once again, in this case, it highlights that uh, it does happen whilst the initiates are there in the initiation school. Uh, some medical developments, you know, medical conditions uh, other than the circumcision operation itself. It develops and it, it, it needed just a medical intervention, but unfortunately, as I've indicated previously, our people before they seek the Western uh, medical intervention, they normally first resort to your traditional uh, herbs. And I, I think in this case, it was just as a delayed Western intervention, uh, hence uh, the death of this gentleman. But it, it had nothing to do with the operation itself. Then we move to the Tsomo case. 08-1-2021. This is a matter of three initiates, all shot at the initiation school. The, the case okay. is, is under investigation by SAC, the SAPS team from Queenstown, led by Captain Ridera. Uh, readers, uh, case referred to us to the DPP's office uh, for consideration. All I choose granted bail. Next court appearance is the 16th of August, 2021. Uh, talking yesterday with the uh, investigating officer, they are still awaiting a ballistic report in this case. What, what I've discovered in this particular case, uh, it is suspected or alleged that uh, these initiates before uh, attending initiation school, apparently they are suspected uh, to being involved in some murder of the uncle of the suspect. And then what happened uh, upon investigation, they then attended um, uh, circumcision school. It is believed that this is a planned and a revenge uh, murder. Uh, because, uh, by the, the family of uh, the uncle who is said to have been killed by these initiates. But uh, the matter is under investigation. Once again, I, I, I need to highlight that uh, the, there, was, there, was, there, there was nothing uh, that there was nothing that had to do with the operation itself. That is the circumcision. It's, it's something that had to do with what happened outside and before the circumcision school, which the suspects in this case uh, led, uh, I mean, followed them to uh, the initiation school. Then we move to Willowville, case 87 of 12, 2020. Uh, it's an under age 17 circumcision, uh, age circumcision without parental consent by an unregistered inribi. Young initiate approached uh, the unregistered inribi for circumcision. That's another challenge, uh, Madam Chair, that we have here. You know, we have what I can call Amadela Kufa, you know, these young uh, boys who would approach unregistered inribi for circumcision. The mother of the initiate opened a criminal case and uh, following difficulty in obtaining JD8, uh, the, initiation, the initiate withdrew the case, 
parent also filed withdrawal statement. Again, this Willowville case uh, highlights a challenge that we have of people who would open up uh, cases with the police, but once they are children, their sons recovers from circumcision operation, they do not want to follow, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, prosecution and uh, offer assistance. And in this case, uh, this docket, which was brought to my office by Kenneth Slacher, uh, I had no option but uh, not uh, to withdraw the case because there is no cooperation. In court, unfortunately, we need this cooperation. Uh, the last one is Tina Falls case one of seven, 2021. Initiates uh, circumcised against the wishes of the local, at uh, direction of the local chief, Zikai Se Goodman Lukhahi during lockdown period in contravention with the regulations uh, of the Disaster Management Act. Chief Tudumayo intervened, assisted by uh, Captain Mkuchulwa in this case. Case is pending before Tina Falls Periodical Court for further investigation. It appeared yesterday. I will just get the further date, what happened, but I was in touch with uh, Sergeant uh, Mlilo, with regard to what is outstanding uh, with this particular case. My conclusion, uh, Madam Chair, my office is further awaiting further dockets uh, from the following areas, Nyandeni area where a death of initiate is reported, Nsoncho area where one inquest is also reported, open, and Musa area where two deaths and assault case uh, at an initiation school opened. As soon as all these dockets are received and consolidated, a consolidated report will be made available. I thank you for the opportunity, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Advocate Angalela. For, for this comprehensive, uh, heartbreaking, I must say that report. It's worse when it's family members that are obstructing the course of justice. Yeah, I, I understand the predicament that you are faced with as the NDPP. Okay. Is SAP having something to report on, on the progress on all these cases? Because definitely, yeah, but I didn't see the report from SAPs. But there are matters that are very clear based on the two advocates' uh, reports that needs SAPS input prior to members engaging. Brigadier Nsabo. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. The presentation by Mr. Stofield, it's an integrated presentation, Madam Chair. I am the provincial head visible policy in the Eastern Cape. Okay. I'm responsible for all the station circumcision coordinators of 198 stations of the Eastern Cape. Okay. Uh, they are forming part of the circumcision forum. Mm. Uh, I wanted to agree with all three presenters, starting from uh, Mr. Stofile, Advocate Ntelwa, and Advocate Pangalele. If you can look at the challenges, uh, uh, Madam Chair, they are completely the same. The police are the first phase of the criminal justice system. If we failed to get all the relevant information for prosecution, therefore nothing will happen. Uh, Advocate uh, Ndelo, as well as Advocate Pangalele, they mentioned issues regarding to the knowledge prosecute cases. There is this document called the J88. 
This J88 is a, is a document that should be taken from the police, completed with the case number, and be taken to the doctor for examination. But if the initiate itself, himself, or the relevant person, a, a mother or a father, they do not mm-hmm. cooperate, then that kills the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, this person called the Tamzi. Tamzi, it, it's not a, a, a word that I think it's like, a, I don't know how I can call it, but it can be Mzingisi, it can be Mzimasi, it can be Mzilikazi. I'm just making an, an example. For investigation purposes, if this initiative says it's Tamzi, where does he stay? He doesn't know. That is one of the issues that are killing our cases with regard to this initiation school, uh, Madam Chair. Most of the cases, therefore, they are declined to prosecute because of the information that is not available from the parents themselves. They're not cooperating with the investigating officers. In our province, as I have said, I am a provincial-led visible policy, also uh, in charge of the circumcision. Uh, I've got also a detective, uh, Kenel Slacha, who was mentioned by uh, Advocate Pangalel. He's looking at the progress of the docket. So he's really uh, uh, making some inroads with regard to that. Uh, Madam Chair, all our cases that we are getting is always the person had some hallucination caused by dehydration. Then the police automatically, because the cause of death is not known, they will open an inquest. All, most of these cases, we are waiting for lab reports, of which then it is difficult to get them from the lab. Our labs that we are utilizing from the Eastern Cape is in Durban, as well as in Cape Town. (laughs) That is managed by my office. The people who are dealing with that is my office. Uh, Madam Chair, our main problem is the mediocrity that is created in the mind of these initiates. This drinking of Imbola. Imbola is like a a color mine, but it's Mm. something that is done and you 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 scratch the, the 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 rock with another something like a rock but it it produces white uh, 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 white solution then they tie that then they drinking that thing with the meat that if you drink the actual water then you're not going to be what you're supposed to be now it's something that needs to be created in the minds of the parents as well because now the time now is not like the time of ourselves you can see most I'm an old man so uh, I think we need to do more of e- e- awareness campaigns remember the provinces then they differ in terms of dynamics mm. yeah in our province we depend on the lectures by the traditional leadership of which then those people are really, really working hard with the police. So we've got a, a, a team here. We work as a team in this province with all the relevant departments like um, Department of Health and the others. We work as a team. So all what uh, the presenters have said, I, I also agree with it. So we will definitely sit down uh, and what happened to get uh, it's something that does not suggest that a circumcision in the Eastern Cape must not continue. Because most of these deaths, they are not really related to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It's just this dehydration because of the mindset of the people. Because if you look at that one of Lucy Gisig mentioned by uh, 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 Advocate Pangale, that lady drank 
didn't want to drink water, didn't want to eat, because he's told that in a certain time, you don't have to eat this and that and that and that. That is meat, especially these days. So it's something still that we need to plan and try and infiltrate our communities and educate them with regard to that. In the police, we've got a structure called uh, uh, Men for Change. So we are making that as one of our activities when they're going to the places at rural areas to do these awareness campaigns. Uh, I, I will talk up until the cows come back. I, I am left with only a few days. I'm going on pension on the 31st of August this year. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and then when you leave, we uh, build capacity. <laughs> well, Chair. Yes, I can say yes, because I've got my uh, circumcision coordinator in my office, Captain Court. He's very, 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 they know him, all of them in the Eastern Group. Thank you, Chair. And Chairperson, so the brigadier looks very young for retirement. That's the point, because he kept <laughs> saying, uh, during our olden days, this is how we used to do things, but you look at him, he doesn't look like somebody who's going on pension. But what do we do, DM, under the circumstances? Colleagues, is national, uh, do you want to say something, DG and team and the uh, acting chairperson, then deputy minister in that order? DG, anything on your part? Or you'll answer questions. Yeah, Chairperson, uh, no, no issues to add uh, from our side at this stage. Thank you. Uh, can I ask the acting ch Chairperson of the National House if there's anything that she wants to say? Uh, <clears throat> good morning, Chairperson. Hi, Chairperson person and the uh, portfolio committee, the M, a DG, uh, the acting chairperson of the provincial house of traditional leaders, all traditional le leaders present here, uh, the, all the staff uh, from COGTA led by DG, uh, everybody who's here, including the advocate we have just uh, presented and, and brigadier. I really appreciate uh, these discussions because the truth is just on the, on the table here. But Chair, I, I expected that maybe the chairperson of the provincial house would speak as the chairperson of the, PC, of the P, PICC before we proceed as, as, as national. If that can be, uh, can be given to him to say something, if he's in part of the meeting. I did that chair, uh, acting chairperson, and he said he agrees with the report of. Oh, thank, the thank you. Thank I you. gave him an opportunity earlier. Thank you. Before thank you. NPA, before Brigadier, I did that. And he just said to us, he concurs with everything that the province has presented. Okay. Are you done? Chairperson, are you done? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Maybe I, I, I know, Chair. I, I'm, I'm still on, on the floor, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Can yes, you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Chairperson. Let me first appreciate the, the presentations here. And as you have already indicated, uh, 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 this report is really touching. And especially to me as, 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 as a woman, as a mother, you know exactly that most, uh, some of the parents, in order for them to have these children, they had to, to play hard. They had to do a lot of rituals. Now they've lost their children. 
some they they were uh, thinking that now since the fathers are no more there they are going to be the heads of families supporting families you can just imagine the pain here but as i'm talking i know uh, uh, since i'm coming from eastern cape we did a lot trying to prevent this even through the structures of women in Bumbaya Makoska Zakom Kul. Because when we're talking about, there were issues that the, the, the single parents, they are also uh, uh, doing a lot of things which are not correct. For instance, changing of the state certificates, birth certificates, and, uh, and also allowing their children to go for initiation not even talking to the, the families, because even if you are widowed, there are family members there who are, 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 are murdered. There are forums which are there if you are faced with challenges as, as, as with the family, because sometimes you may, we do face challenges with families as, 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 as single mothers or more mom, but there are forums which are there to assist us. But, and even from our side at national level, the, the, the Emma Bell and, and the late Ngozi Mashlang, may he's so rest in peace, they tried their best. The attitudes also of uh, that, this one is coming from that side, cannot uh, intervene, can tell, cannot tell us. It is, it is even there in the province itself, as I'm coming from Pedi, I paid this also to talk film quite. But if you are saying, let's take a, in Okanya Abantu from a paid to go and assist, they will be faced with a lot of challenges. But the issue of parents here is very key in whatever we are doing because it's parents which who I will draw the cases. That is why I also suspect that. Most of those initiates, they are coming from maybe the single parents who are even told by the children, go and withdraw that case and I'm not going to participate to that. But now my suggestion will be as much as we are trying very hard as traditional leaders because I'm also in ghost. I can't speak like as, as if I'm not in ghost. I know their frustration. I, I, I also see their photos when they are moving to the hidden places where it is even difficult to reach those places. But here now, there comes Iskadi Zongkidi to talk and celebrate. Let's target those, those places. And it you tell you don't, you don't know how did your child go there? How can you celebrate? How can you have umkiti? So let's also target those areas with umkiti. Sifuna ama pepa uba the domtona as she as he went for, for initiation. Where are the papers? Even some uh, some uh, some of the umkiti are done by also suit where there's a group of initiates. Get all those papers. Ustabs must assist us to visit as on area of Nikiti. Where go to serve as a paper, no kitty, and and can go. Ubuta was wayas going. How do you celebrate in Donga Yazi? We celebrate a Janum kitty on Gawazi. So let's also celebrate. Just, just trying anything now. But you know, it's a frustration in the Abazali who are withdrawing the cases. I, I, I suggest a chair from your uh, portfolio committee. If we don't have those who are participating in that structure of initiation, give one, give us some someone to be to be part of that. Uh, 
uh, uh, of, of that uh, uh, structure, both national, whether about that, you know, Mpums are part of that. If they are not, they must be part of that so that they can be clear. And yes, they are clear about these issues, but as 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 they are also member members of the communities but you can allocate someone to be part of this this is frustrating a person but the parents are they are the main culprits here the parents here you can even blame ama course in abani but if parents are the main culprits here, thank you, Chairperson. Oh. Okay, Jim. So thank you, Chairperson and members of the Portfolio Committee. Greetings to Unkoskaz Mshawuli as the acting chair of the National House and greetings to Unkosma Vuso, the acting chair of the Eastern Cape. All officials from Cocta National and Cocta Eastern Cape who are present here. Uh, greetings to all and also the delegation from the NPA and also the delegation from the police. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm just going to just say a few remarks uh, in punctuating uh, the matters as already tabled uh, uh, in this meeting. So when I arrived in this portfolio in 2014, obviously the issue that I was initiated to was to deal with these issues of reducing the death and the casualties uh, in the initiation schools across the country. Uh, and at the time when I was arriving in the Eastern Cape, uh, in 2010, I, we had, I found that uh, there were already 62 deaths that were there and 635 casualties. In 2011, as I was studying now my arrival, uh, 65 deaths and 651 casualties. In 2012, it was 74 deaths and 577 casualties. And in 2013, it was 67 deaths and 500 casualties. So those were the figures at the time. Uh, and then from 2014, uh, going to now, we started working with the province really on how to mitigate uh, and then go really deeper into the issue. And the numbers went below 50 at some point, went below 30, and they were now beginning to go towards the 20s and below 20 uh, uh, until 2018 or so. And, and then we hope, therefore, that program was not beginning to give results. and. Uh, and, uh, and then we hope we'll then still working together to ensure, therefore, that we, we arrest deaths. The campaigns had three messages. One was one death is too many, so that we, we then say everyone who goes to initiation must come back alive. We shouldn't have any deaths. Culture can kill people. Tradition can kill people. And, uh, and initiation can, should not even kill people. Uh, it is our culture, it must be done with pride, and, uh, and, uh, and then that respects life. The second campaign uh, message was zero tolerance on initiation deaths. Uh, that was the second one, to build on the one death is too many. And then the, the last campaign that is even now on the jackets, on, on the lambas that the initiation forums are wearing in the Eastern Cape is called all that message is to say, let's stop these deaths from occurring so that culture can then be practiced with pride and love. The relationship with the Eastern Cape uh, are very okay. We have been working together with the house, with the MECs, with the department, uh, putting pressures on each other's. Uh, uh, we'll have arguments, yes, and then the sensitivities, one had to learn a lot of those particular sensitivities across all the national groups in the Eastern Cape. We have had workshops, we have had endeavors, uh, the public uh, visibility was very high. We, we even had to then redo the legislation of the Eastern Cape to strengthen it, which was finally adopted by the uh, legislature and the government is using the new legislation 
which was uh, strengthened really to begin to achieve the goals and the results. Uh, the establishment of the national task team was done. The national in the provinces also, they have their own. And then, then we have Omama in Bombayobo, Yamakoskazu, Agumkulu, which also came in to say some Omama who have a role to play, particularly in the sense that if Omtwana area, we are in the MPA family, where family gather and they will then pray and talk to the ancestors that our child is going, please keep them safe so that they come back home safe. Oh, mama, but nabo sine However, as women, it's us who prepares psychologically and mentally, and otherwise these children, esiba nine months, it's more mama. So, siba ningeza o tata. For two weeks, and they were then saying that whilst I could keep the child at nine months in May and then read that child to be a ripe 18 year old. Uh, for the 18 years of mama, plays that particular role. So, those were the issues, those were the punctuating messages. Hence, they also had to. A group themselves as women. We also had what we call the pre-season initiation medical certificate program was also introduced because one of the issues that we realized was that some of them were not killed by initiations. They will go in there, ngama illnesses, artillery, asthma, and others. And if you can see now, those illnesses are no longer killing because yes, I have Omela, and we did agree that. Uh, uh, children uh, about the medication conditions should be allowed to take their medications whilst at the school. But initially, they were refused to, to take in those medicine, asthma and others, whatever were the medications. that And, and in, as a result, the issue as a result of their death, as a result of other illnesses has reduced from being number one, it has now, is now number four. And I think these medical certificates uh, did help, even though we know that some of the people go to others just to go and uh, do a fake one. We just have to clean that particular environment that fake certificates are allowed uh, of the children that goes in. These are the five uh, causes of deaths in the men in the initiation. Number one is dehydration. This we can really prevent Men made, as the brigadier was saying and explaining it, uh, it is still number one. People, these children, when they go in there, two things happen. They are either not allowed to drink water or they refuse to drink water. Uh, and, uh, and then as a result of the lack of the drinking of the water, then that kills them. And, uh, and, 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 and therefore, we just have really to go and deal with this myth. Uh, and one had to go into history as to how it arrived. I'll explain it a bit. Number two is septemia. It's also number two where the wounds do not heal well after the operations and uh, the care is not well done by the Inkankata, which is the, the traditional nurse. And then, then, and then therefore, then they then develop that uh, uh, and then and then it then it, it leads to to, uh, to the other complications and and then they die. It, it's it, it is still number two. So it means therefore that what we then observe is that the training of inhibi, the traditional operators, the skill is evaporating. Those elder men, the younger ones, do not have that best skill. And there's an area that we have agreed with the traditional leaders that we need to really to look at that issue so that then the best skills are developed and so forth. But also, we also find that the cause is also because those who were initiated last year will then be the initiators uh, this year. Uh, and then yet they don't have that particular experience themselves. And then, and then that's why we then have to consider it also ought to be looked at. And then the third is the Bosch uh, circumcision. Those who don't know do that at all, they'll just somebody just in the or say next door will then be allowed to, to do a, 
a circumcision on these particular boys. Uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then as the, the age comes in, is because some of them, they run away from home at the age 12, 13, 14, and 17. I've seen them. I went to hospitals across, uh, and then I found them. We engaged and talked with them. Why was we a payana we have a mom without the parents' permission. No, 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 it's peer pressure. Uh, at school, my my other boys will laugh at me when we're in the toilet, and they will look at me and say, "Oh, in uh, uh, But yes, we are, we are still in at the age of 13, 14. In doing, what's wrong with being in Kwenkwe? Until you are 18 and you go there, then you, it's fine. But you are 13, 14. What's wrong with you being in Kwenkwe? But unfortunately, the word in Kwenkwe has been used in an abusive manner uh, on these young boys. Therefore, they will then run home without parents' permission and go to the mountain. And then those men that receive them, they just see money and then they just collect money because these boys, they will make savings quietly without their parents knowing. You give them monies, they will put it aside continuously by the period then they already have sufficient money. Then they give this, uh, this illegal uh, or this uh, uh, in uh, in the bees who just love money, and they'll take the money, initiate them, and then leave them there, and that's it. And 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 and, and therefore the Bosch circumcision became higher. We have the whole of the eastern, the, the whole of the country, eight hundred of Bosch circumcision with panel uh, injuries. And then that is why the, 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 the hospitals in Cape Town have developed a specialty, but only those who, who, who can implant uh, with good money can do so. But the rest of others, their human being is gone. It's 800 of them according to the Department of Health. Of those injuries of people who are living permanently injured, uh, in that particular situation. We also have to stop that uh, and then reduce uh, if only we can really bring in. Then the medical conditions is now number for those who come and die as a result of other illnesses that are not related to the circumstances. And then the last one is the unsafe shelters, illegal shelter schools in particular, where these uh, children will then go and then the they care is not there the abuse is very high. They get assaulted. Uh, they get banned with plastics. And when we're asking why this ill treatment, they then said that, you no, know, it is to train them to be men. They must be strong. They must feel the pain. And in going through the pain, by the time you finish your initiation and your circumcision, then you come back a strong person. And some of them, they are taught wrong things there. That is why even when they come back from the mountain, they are abusive in their communities. They think that they can do anything and then they rape and then, and then because they are get told that uh, for you to move your manhood now after coming back. So the, the, the cases of old women being raped in their villages also begin to go up around that particular period because it's of those who went to the illegal schools where there's no control, there's no management, traditional leaders are not involved to guide and then ensure, therefore, that the safe passages are done and then adhered to because of the commercialization of those who are running these particular schools. So those are the five reasons that are, are still there. And then the challenges of illegal schools, the challenge of uh, underage, and then the unregistered in Navy and the unregistered in Kankata. Those are the issues that are still unfortunately bedeviling uh, the circumcision, which is a good culture, but unfortunately infiltrated by this particular wrongdoers. So therefore, we, we have then since uh, introduced a, a policy in 2015, and the policy became a legislation. That legislation uh, has gone through parliament. It has been adopted by both houses. The president has now signed it into law. And then on the 1st of September, uh, it's, it's going to be commencing as a new law nationally that will then begin to deal with all these issues, including the illegal schools, the underage issues, and so forth. 
and uh, and uh, and then and then the, the, the gazette will be published this uh, month uh, before the, the law commences on the first of September. We hope therefore that there will be a, a, a new way of looking at circumcision protected and so that it, it, it can then continue without any hindrance. So uh, I think those are the issues that I just wanted to share. Uh, but also I think the police should concur with me here that uh, these assaults, they usually open grievous family body, uh, body charges. If any person has been assaulted, banned with plastics and so forth, some of the injuries leads to death. And that's where then the, the murder will then also occur arising. It's not a circumcision that has killed the person, but it's the acts of actions that are done by other boys who will then visit the schools, bring in alcohol, bring in drugs, and then all sorts of things then happens. And they will then punish these kids. Some of them can't take the pay and they end up dying. So those cases have been opened across. And then, then there will also be these grudges that happens in communities where they will wait for you to go to an initiation school and then they will then follow you to go and kill you there. Hence the shootings that are taking place uh, as reported by the department in others. But it's a common feature or gangsterism that will also arise. They'll wait for you to go to school. Whilst you are there, gather a stranger of you, they'll attack that school and kill everybody or kill some. But then the target will have been grudges uh, that have been there uh, amongst them as boys, and then they end up. The last issue, Chair, is the issue around the different cultures that are existing. We need to be sensitive to the cultures, definitely. Uh, but also at the same time, we need to also to engage on these cultures that are no longer as human rights orientated. Uh, these cultures that do not build us as a nation. Uh, culture is not static. Culture ought to adapt. There are now a human rights society that exists in South Africa. Uh, and then the issue of the trans guy in the main uh, was raised with us and uh, it was discussed by the house in the Eastern Cape uh, during and goes to Matanzima's term of office as the chair. We engage in the Indaba around that particular issue. That uh, for, for us to win the battle, particularly in the Mpondo areas, uh, where the deaths are high, uh, where there's no cooperation by parents, uh, where there's no cooperation by communities, is for us really to, to really engage with Amambondo leadership, traditional leaders. Kani, Zonke, and then say, guys, this thing is out of control. What is your way of finding a solution on it? When you go into the historical documents, uh, initiation was suspended or uh, abolished 100 years ago when Kim Fak was the king. And uh, it resurfaces is now in the 70s uh, again because uh, of of the cultural uh, value system that exists in the Eastern Cape that among a young intervene our seeing dot. Uh, and, uh, and then in communities, the if a young intervene, you can't even eat with men and assemble with men and with men when they meet in the funerals and the weddings and those things. Those who are not, even if you are seven to eight, if you are not from the mountain, you get told good Lapan. As a result, there's this push that Amambondo, who had abolished it, now have to go and do it so that they can be associated and be accepted in the society value system that exists strongly in the Eastern Cape. Uh, and without this value system, they will not survive. So then, then suggested that. Let's engage the leadership and because if we could then revisit this particular issue and go and have and to bring these issues to their attention so that they can then begin to have leadership value system that they then impose on this particular situation. So that everybody then really go and then because Basa is really strong in Pagatini. Uh, to go and really and resolve these issues. And they also suggested that even in Ashaba in Gomogubenum Bizum Kul, 
there could be many with the ancestors just to say, we are now reviving this, we are bringing it back formally, but it, does, it shall be practiced in the following way, taking into the Mbondo cultural values and the customs into being. That needs to be known or unknown by everybody, obviously practiced differently from one family to the other, so that we don't just say one size fits all, but then also then begin to bring in this normality as it is in the rest of the other communities in the Eastern Cape. It will go a long way in doing that fulfillment. There was a dispute of the kinship at the time, it was difficult to get it. Now that matter has been settled. We really ought to take that space and really then uh, engage on the matters and then resolve on, on, on it. So let me stop there, Chair, just by of adding to the challenge. I know you will be looking at the figures now uh, and the issues of what happened during COVID-19. Why couldn't we wait for the situation to subside? time in the Eastern Cape. And, and, and then as Mam Shaulu was saying, at some point, they even stopped us from going in as the national government, where they were told me, I say, in 2019, I got stopped from visiting to go and help uh, because Gutua, I'm interfering with the cultural and then other value system. But we've got the law at the same time. On one side, that ought to be uh, 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 run throughout the country but sensitive to the cultural aspects of it, of it and will not impose, but the law is the law and we ought to respect the law. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Deputy Minister. My apologies. I was my apologies for that. Uh, colleagues, that's where we are. Can I see all of you want to interact with all these presentations? I deliberately allowed the DM to start so that maybe it was going to assist us to minimize a lot of questions. In course, I know you are the national, uh, in the national house, you are responsible for, for these things. I will give you a chance immediately after all the members have interacted with this presentation so that you can also raise the other issues respond to some of the issues that the members will have. I've seen you are here. Welcome. You joined the meeting some time ago when we were busy. I want to welcome you. Uh, it will be honorable Keza. I had a deal with him since last night. Now that honorable Mukalip is not here. I'm told it's a woman's month. Then you will be followed by honorable Direko, then it's gonna be followed by Honorable Hadewe with an H. Then Honorable Mpumza, you've already been invited to sit in the task team, Honorable Mpumza. Yeah, in that order for now. Honorable Kleza, over to you. No, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, it's indeed the uh, women's mother. Um, it would have been ideal that a woman uh, takes a charge uh, in this month in terms of calling against these matters and illegal uh, initiations that we've been calling against previously. And uh, our position, uh, greetings to all of you colleagues and our traditional leaders at large and the ministers and, and everyone. Um, and our position, and still is, that uh, there must be swift action that uh, emanates from uh, just uh, the matters that okay. Now, out of, 
I do not know, Chair, uh, this thing of, of societal, generally society in South, in South Africa uh, gets bullied. I do not know where it comes from. It, it, it goes to other traditional uh, uh, societies as well that you get bullied with time frames of, of success. I mean, even if you build a house at 60, it's still an achievement. Even if you, you, you bore children at 40, it is still a, an achievement. So I do not know what it is that has caused this in our society, that we, we speak down on each other like that. Because when I, uh, my experience overseas, you will, you will, you'll see it uh, when Swedish, when, when the Swedes are uh, uh, joke about the Norwegians, how stupid they are. Uh, they have certain jokes that are attached to stigma. Uh, that certain there's 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 generally cultural intolerance that occurs uh, throughout the world, and I do not know uh, how we are going to seek to do this beginning with our country, thus the African continent, uh, the regions, and so forth, in in the manner in which we look at each other uh, as blacks and as human beings, because before we were black, we were human. So that I do not know. Maybe the, 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 the ministry could, could then uh, uh, conduct a research as to what is to be done in order to ensure that our cultures, our, our humanity is protected. We don't have a situation where we are uh, children are bullied and are pressured into making decisions because at a, at a certain point, at 14 years, children are not able to take uh, informed decisions. Thus, parents are, are, are integral in that process to actually uh, uh, assist them to make those decisions and take them through the cultural practice from birth up until the actual cutting the chair. Uh, we've also spoken to uh, the issue of age. The last time when we spoke about the customary initiation bill uh, of all these uh, initiate, in, um, surgeons that the agreed age be at 40 years of age and must have uh, undergone initiation himself, proof of experience, uh, as a caregiver for a minimum of five initiation seasons. So I do not know where that disappears. Uh, and, and, and I think it should be much more uh, stronger. It should much more, it, it should come out much more stronger uh, in, 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 that, in that regard, Chair. And then it gives me, it rise to the question, uh, out of these issues that we do, that we've we've uh, we've had from all presentations, it is common that there is unlawful uh, uh, circumcision that has occurred uh, due to dehydrations, which is prevalent, and 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 and, and respiratory uh, 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 diseases. That are, that are coupled with clots and other and other things that have been mentioned in in the in in the presentations. Uh, you have a situation where in uh, uh, I also come from Pedi, as you know, Chepesi. And to date, I've not experienced anything like that. Uh, I've to date, and and this is not to say Chepesi is not going to happen. But I think that uh, lessons must be learned. Uh, at this time, perhaps uh, not going and, 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 and telling people that this is what is happening there, but uh, perhaps through the department, uh, get the lessons uh, learned from particular uh, uh, places where, 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 where the atrocities are not, are not prevalent. And say that uh, uh, let's uh, uh, let's let's perhaps uh, use those expertise 
and those and those practices that are still remaining in terms of uh, ensuring the smooth uh, uh, processes of, of of this practice uh, and 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 the result and the result and the positive results that should come out of it. Uh, Chairperson, the and then the then the um, advocate speaks to the withdrawal of cases and wondered that uh, what what could be uh, found uh, reasons for that uh, and uh, secondly that the some of the cases are not uh, still pending doesn't bring us much more uh, uh, intervention that has been uh, uh, effective uh, because uh, we can't say there are consequences in these cases because if you look throughout most of the cases are pending and and we can't say as the committee that uh, there are consequence there's consequence management there they, that is that is complete and we can't calculate the numbers and we can't see the improvement in terms of the fatalities that are uh, the, the improvement of 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 the eradication of 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 the fat, fatalities rider rather chair uh, so it becomes difficult for us to to measure the 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 outcomes of this when, when actually most of these things are are still pending uh, the system that we have chair in place in terms of what government has uh, speaks to the police the npa and and, and so forth and uh, we haven't we are yet to hear of proactive measures uh, that are in place to anticipate uh, all these fatalities as difficult as it is to to anticipate uh, we have not uh, had forthcoming uh, interventions uh, to say that even to the extent of those uh, those those uh, those forums uh, what is it that they have done uh, to ensure that they they, they they have preventive methods to to reduce the fatalities there. Uh, often that we have reactive uh, measures in the form of 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 of, of uh, the available uh, uh, measures that were that are available now in the community. And then uh, the most difficult one, Chairperson, is the underage circumcision. Uh, that uh, you know, Section Twenty Seven, Section Twenty Eight C, and and Section Twenty Eight D of the Constitution, Section Eleven of the Constitution, Section Twelve E. Uh, and section 10 on human di dignity uh, would have to really, really be seen to be applicable uh, in these uh, 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 challenges, in these issues in the, in the main circumcision. And then, Chair, uh, it is a crisis when did... It, it is the crisis indeed uh, for, for the parents and extended families that went through this, uh, as, as, uh, as Mam Chauli has said, uh, the stigmatization attached to it and so forth. Uh, and then in slide four, Chair, in Tafalo Fefe in Amatol, where, where an initiate was admitted uh, in Glen Ray Gray Hospital as a result of uh, epileptic penis 
and acute respiratory disease syndrome. Uh, again, doctors could have perhaps uh, determined the state of health of the initiate uh, prior to the initiate going to uh, these, these things. May, perhaps there should be a framework uh, that should govern um, the, the regular uh, examination of, 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 of the boys in, 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 in all areas where initiation uh, occurs. Uh, so that we we then reduce the 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 the, the fatalities. I'm trying to be short, chair. You know, I write a lot. Uh, the presentation by the Eastern Cape Corkster indicates that there are 300 illegal initiates initiation schools. If this is possible to count. Uh, why are they not being uh, closed down or destroyed, if, if, if you were? Uh, that's another question. And then, uh, just to... That, uh, what is the role of traditional leaders in essence, in terms of... Uh, ensuring uh, the, the, the preventive methods, are, are, are they involved? That's just clarity. It's a clarity seeking questions because some of these traditional leaders come to us and complain about the, them being threatened by certain authorities that uh, if they enforce their authority themselves, uh, they will be in contravention of the 1977 Criminal Act, uh, Justice Act. Now, I don't know the Criminal Justice Act. Can someone please assist me? What does Criminal Justice Act have to do with traditional leaders? And how do we avoid a Eurocentric laws to govern traditional affairs? Uh, because for me, Chair, this, this is a, a, an indication of some center that is not holding. It, it does depict to a certain extent that some center is not holding here. And if that center is not holding, uh, what, it, what is it that uh, Will, will be put in place in ensuring that there's, there's, there's cooperation uh, within those structures uh, to, to again uh, help reduce the, the fatalities, Chair. Uh, and then uh, where are the, I, I, I had a advocate in, in the law. Uh, speaking to to the issue of of aspiration, the aspiration case in Queenstown, where he spoke about traditional uh, a person opt, opting to go to traditional leaders, a, a parent, uh, is is he suggesting that uh, I'm not an advocate myself? Is is he is he suggesting that that person uh, committed an offence? Isn't that a, a effort enough towards ensuring that uh, that particular parent, he or she attends to, 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 to the son, to, to the, 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 the child. And what is wrong with traditional medicine, actually? Can, can I be clear on that? Because um, I seek clarity. Uh, then, Chair, I wanted to raise a very important issue. Uh, an issue of uh, uh, the, signif the significant need uh, for, for a research on hygiene aspects and the role of health education in initiation school uh, to, to ensure the quality of health effects of environmental conditions such as extreme temperatures, on the health of initiates 
uh, assessment of hygiene of food, utensils and food preparation areas, effectiveness of sterilization methods used in initiation school for circumcision instruments, compliance rate of general and healthcare risk, risk waste. And then I wanted to say that uh, In, 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 in reality, there, there are many sectoral uh, uh, departments that this, this, this particular uh, uh, situation that we are faced with now, it does in fact require uh, sector departments to be, to be all system, it's all system goes, go, because, you know, we, we, we've raised uh, many issues uh, pertaining to uh, 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 the availability of, of adequate measures within the health facilities. Uh, I think in 2018, we marched to, to all hospitals and then uh, we, we then, uh, demanded that there should be adequate uh, health attention, particularly to the poor and the workers. Uh, because that situation in public hospitals would not help this particular situation that is that we, we want to improve here of, the, of those uh, fatalities of, of children. It would not assist at all. If, if the Department of Water and Sanitation is a part of it, it will also not assist the, the process uh, to, to actually, if there are no measures to, 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 to arrest the, 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 the fatalities before, rather than uh, government having to, 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 to react on, this, on these issues, then we will have, I think we'll have, we'll find traction share in terms of uh, having a sense of where we are and 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 rather than uh, having uh, being not not quite sure as to how how this the the, the situation has improved uh, so so i think that uh, we would uh, really uh, improve the, 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 the this 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 uh, issue and then uh, Advocate Pangalela speaks to the J88 issue that uh, parents become discouraged once a child is, uh, has healed and do not want to follow up. Uh, do, do, do parents even know that uh, the J88 medical report uh, really, or do they know it at the time of, 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 of opening a case that following that you should acquire a J88. What assistant measures, post-assistant measures, post-initiation assistant measures uh, do, do the police uh, put in place in order to acquire these documents? Because I'm sure those documents are, are not well known in society in general. Uh, there are documents unique to a particular sector de departments. You would only know when you are involved there or you are arrested yourself. And uh, I think society needs to be taken through this thing. And uh, in, a, in a quest to, to empower and also uh, uh, give um, knowledge about the advantages of, of having to follow up. So Chair, in reality, uh, the, those sicknesses of diarrhea and all those things, uh, if you go to, to Google, they will tell you what it is. What are the, the root causes? So, so, in a nutshell, I'm saying the root causes must be established 
to avoid reoccurrence. Um, traditional leaders must be more involved. Uh, the, because my question is, when this occurs in, in, in reality, where is the, because there they, they, they are structures like, like Ikangata and Ingalat, we are not mentioning that. When there's a problem there, Ingalati must run to the to the, to the village and 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 report on the on the matters as as as, as arising in the in the initiation school. Uh, so I'm asking uh, where where are these structures there when these things are happening? So proactive measures must really take place. Uh, And then what are the circumstances? I wrapping up. No, I am wrapping up. It's the last one. Sure. So, what, 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 what was said the circumstances that led to an initiate to be banned in both hands? Because this is not a typical initiation related, because it sounds like a, an abduction and such things uh, were proposing that really criminal cases must be treated uh, with the respect that they deserve. Uh, no one must get away with murder. And uh, we are told that that person is not known uh, because this will force the initiates to forceful, either forcefully uh, 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 migrate due to the shame uh, attached to stigmatization or or just the shame of 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 uh, having uh, open a case against someone that he knows. So action must be taken, and uh, results must be seen. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Honorable Deza. Honorable Director, over to you. Honorable Director. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think Honorable Kaiser has covered most of the, of the questions. However, Chair, when you look at Eastern Cape, it's one of the province that has a high number of uh, illegal initiation schools. And when you look at their presentation, it shows that they have about 300 initiation schools and they have about uh, 3,281 initiates in, the, in those illegal schools. So I want to check with the department, how are they resolving this matter of illegal initiation schools, which is resulting to high death rate in the province? When you look at the number of the deceased from this initial school, it's very high. So what is it that they are doing and what are the challenges in terms of addressing this matter? Because this matter has been there for many years. And I understand they are saying it's complicated to deal with this matter, but how complicated can it be to trace something that has more than 3,000 uh, uh, children on it? Is it that difficult? And is there any awareness campaign against this uh, uh, illegal initiated initiation schools that are taking place. And if there are awareness campaigns, are they winning in that uh, campaigns that they are doing? Or is there any strategies that needs to be implemented on this matter? And then Chair, in the presentation on the Heaven Hill case, it shows that uh, uh, the, the cause of the death for one initiate, uh, initiate is unknown. How did it uh, happen that uh, is unknown? Why was there no post-mortem done? And then in the other matter, Chair, it is indicated that some of the family members are not cooperating with the investigations in these cases. So what are the actions taken against those family members? Are they also informed about the importance of taking place in these uh, cases? 
And the other issue, I think the DM also touched on it, is the issue of gangsterism or other criminal activities that are happening in the initiation schools. What is it that uh, the province is doing in order to avoid such situation? Now we have uh, initiates who have been shot in one of the schools, uh, whether it's illegal school or not legal school. What, what, what is it that government is doing to address this matter of of illegal activities that are happening. And uh, Chair, there's also the issue of dehydration. And uh, I, I also need to, to, to check uh, what are the circumstances around, uh, surrounding the matter of dehydration of the initiation, uh, of the initiates. And uh, Chair, I also want to check if the, 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 the schools are receiving necessary support from the environmental health uh, practitioners in the district? And what is the relationship between the initiation schools and municipality together with the component of uh, environmental health in, in, the, in the districts? Uh, those are the questions, uh, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Direkong. Honorable Hadewe, over to you. Thank you, Honorable the Chairperson. Um, I have been covered in most of the questions that I wanted to pose, Chair. I only have a few questions left, and you will excuse my ignorance in, in this regard. I'd like to get an understanding from the department. Uh, please share with us what constitute illegal initiation schools other than the underage and uh, parental consent and unregistered in AB, so that at least we also assist uh, and share with the general public out there what constitute illegal initiation schools. The second question that I have, uh, I think it's uh, the soon to retire general. Uh, he spoke about the, the lab in Devon and Cape Town only can I just get a, a clear understanding um, what lab was he referring to and how is it contributing negatively or positively to the work that ought to be conducted by the uh, department. The issue of awareness campaign has been raised by more than one um, speakers. Can we just uh, get a sense um, and ask the department to explain and expand what type of awareness campaign are they referring to so that uh, if we can uh, intervene in terms of assistance, we have MPs all over the country and they have constituency offices. If there is a need for us to intervene in terms of such awareness campaign, because we do have community outreach programs that we do as uh, members of parliament. So please explain to us the nature and the type of awareness campaign that you, you want uh, uh, to conduct and that you have already conducted. The, the last aspect Chair, deals with the policy that was initiated in 2015, which has recently been signed by the president into law. How far has the department gone in uh, educating uh, traditional leaders and those that are responsible for initiation in terms of this new legislation so that uh, as soon as it kicks in in September, everyone is aware of, of the law, mindful of the fact that ignorance of the law has no excuse, but it, it, it needs uh, also from our side to make sure that our people are well educated and are aware of of of, of such a, a regulation. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe. Honorable Mpumza, over to you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and, uh, and uh, good morning, Chair. To you too, Honorable Mpumza. Yes, let me also greet uh, the President uh, and the Council uh, Gumakosi and uh, the Council uh, Deputy Minister Nazozongi Gokel. 
ezikulo mhlangano wale committee yakho sihlala sit properly yeah then we can see you thank you che, che, it is uh, very unfortunate that uh, we have received indeed a very detailed uh, a report uh, on consequence management um around the, the circumcision season in the Eastern Cape. <laughs> um, uh, however, in this detailed report, we uh, by the said that on consequence management, we are getting a high number of uh, cases that are under inquest and some cases that are undetected. And this is a worry. And uh, I think uh, Brigadier has also alluded as to these factors, <laughs> critically being one that of uh, the Brigadier released to, he said it's mediocrity. What's this? Mediocrity, yes. But uh, I, I would, uh, I would uh, not agree with me that much, other than to say that uh, the critical challenge around this issue of uh, a high number of uh, uh, illegal uh, circumcision schools may be arising out of uh, a creeping commercialization of for such a secret uh, 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 a sacred passage to manhood. Now being uh, dented by the fact that we are in the process, we are finding that uh, we are getting uh, bogus traditional surgeons and traditional nurses. And uh, you could see that uh, and a high number of illegal in initiation schools, almost 300. That might be arising out of uh, this commercialization more than being uh, adhering to the culture. Yes, of course, the fact that uh, to what extent is the lockdown as well as the pandemic uh, contributing towards a high level of peer pressure that would uh, see young boys running into these illegal schools uh, is a factor that we could look at. But what is important is that uh, as part of the education process and awareness, uh, we have to focus more on demystification of some of the myths that had come uh, to be embedded uh, in this uh, sacred ritual so that the ritual is allowed to live and to serve its purpose. Beyond that, we are seeing that there is an equal number of uh, illegal initiates with illegal ones. Can we be explained by the department and the leadership of traditional the structures? Uh, how do we account for this high number of illegal initiates equal to illegal ones? What are the factors that are indeed contributing to this? At the same time, here, Chair, we have uh, uh, in the report that one initiate um, was wounded around his uh, both two hands. And this injury is not related to a, a circumcision. Can we then be explained as to what had been the factors leading to this injury of uh, the initiate being bent on both two hands? My last uh, short share or my last comment or question around this matter, I think I've heard uh, uh, what uh, the call of Mamumslauli, Uncle Simslauli is saying. Uh, Chair, the, the, the other point is that 
in this report, where's the snow? None of the case numbers reported under consequence management by the province on, on the province's report relate to the 2020 initiation season. Can it be explained to us why this is the case? Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mpumza. Uh, I just want to also ask some very critical issues. I won't take much of the time as the colleagues have, have raised uh, most of the pertinent issues I wanted to raise. And I'm glad that uh, when Advocate Mtuela made the presentation, he tried to also deal with the, the previous uh, cases, 2018 uh, cases, because it has become a trend in the Eastern Cape to say whenever there's a circumcision, then this should be life that are lost. And then I've, I've also, I would have also expected advocate a uh, Bangalela to do the same on the update on the previous cases. Uh, because also there are cases that of December 2019. Uh, uh, I think there was a total of 28 deaths. Uh, uh, maybe the status quo on those inquests and the cases that has been uh, registered to say how far have you gone in also resolving those cases and the messaging. But then the other issue that is so disturbing is when there's a case that is registered, you are told there's no victim or the suspect is unknown or the victim cannot be traced. And then also the concern of withdrawals at some point. I just need to be schooled maybe because there were times where if I'm not mistaken, to say that uh, there was a, an attempt to deal with these issues of people who, who open cases and later withdraw, uh, that there was there was a, a, a regulation or legislation that was being promulgated so that when you know that you are wasting the state the state resources, then you must take a, the, face the might of the law. What happened in that development? Because there were cases where in if it's not magistrates or the prosecutors or the police, where in if somebody then open a case and you will be you won't be allowed to withdraw it without a very justifiable circumstances under the case because normally when these cases are opened, like you are saying, we understand and share your frustration to say at some point when the complainants feel that they are better. They don't want to pursue it with the matter. Also, then, uh, also the families of the victims sometimes, because they know they are solely responsible for this. And then this issue of Tamzi, as the brigadier has said, uh, nobody knows where he stays. He's not known. They are not known. And then is it an indication that then the, the question that I want to raise here, when these cases are, are, are reported and this person doesn't know this person, is it an indication that somebody will just allow himself to be circumcised by somebody whom he doesn't even know? And then I'm curious to understand to say, then where does these things actually happen under the circumstances? Because that's where one has got difficulty to comprehend these things to say then, you still report a case, but the, uh, the, 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 the suspect is not known. And then the suspect is called Jamzi. <laughs> so these are some of the things to say. Are these things happening in actual schools, outside the schools, so that we can have an understanding as to what is actually happening there? 
So those are the issues that one wanted to add on on what the, the colleagues have raised. Over to you, Tim. I will first allow Inko, Inko Sindevu to be the one that deal with the issues as raised, on the, uh, as raised by the members and any other issue that he wanted to raise, then I'll allow the provincial house with a cocktail in the province, then it will be the NPA, and then it will be the police being the last ones to respond on the various issues as raised by colleagues. Over to you, Inko Sindevu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Um, greetings to you, and also greetings to everyone uh, that is in the meeting, who chairperson or uh, acting chairperson of the National House, uh, Deputy Minister Bapela, uh, all MPs that are present in the meeting, and all government officials and all our stakeholders. Molweni uh, Nong. Molweni Nkos. Uh, yes, uh, indeed, uh, the risk adjusted. We didn't arrange for interpretation ne? for the benefit of the other members that can hear the language. I know you can speak, please. Oh. Not to oh, undermine you, the languages, ne? we yes, don't you. undermine who could have arranged for interpretation. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairperson, the, let me appreciate the fact that uh, the Eastern Cape has submitted the risk adjusted strategy, which was talking to the issues and areas that will be looked at when the initiation schools are, are to begin. Uh, and, and also, I also understand that, yes, indeed, there are some deaths irrespective of the risk adjusted strategy. But uh, uh, I am very lucky to be in this meeting and coming from the initiation monitoring a program last week. And in this meeting, I will give you the real issues that are happening on the ground as I was on, on, on the initiation monitoring teams. Chairperson, yes, uh, one would ask as Honorable Teza has asked that how, <clears throat> how much involvement that traditional leaders have in so far as dealing with the issues of initiation schools. And then one would then an answer in that question to say, traditional leaders are 100% involved in, in the issues of initiation schools. But the, the fact of the matter, Chairperson, is that traditional leaders are not staying from these households where the boys are coming from. I can be in my village and help people there in order to sign the required papers for their boys to go to, in, to the initiation schools. But I cannot be where the initiation schools are every hour of each and every day. Therefore, there is some kind of a reality that is not being presented in this meeting. I have not had any, anyone uh, of the people presenting here talked about the issues of resources that are necessary uh, to help those teams that are on the ground to really address the issues that are happening there. Let me make you one example, uh, Chairperson. As I was monitoring the, el the area of Willow Vale in the in the area of King Zalonga Sitao of Amatos. I was monitoring there using my own vehicle. In OC that were supposed to be working with me, they had no vehicles. I had to give them a lift in my own vehicle. That's area number one, which I think needs to be addressed because I don't hear anyone 
says how much support that COCTA gives to traditional leaders when they are supposed to be addressing issues of intervention on the initiation schools. Uh, yes, I would leave my area because I've set all the systems in place and I know that there's gonna be no problem. When I have to go to another area, I need resources. How do I get those resources? If COCTA does not come into picture to say, this is the level of resources that we are deploying as we are approaching a season of initiation schools. We have been helped by the Department of Health in terms of the resources that we think they were supposed to be brought in by our own COCTA department. That's the department that we see uh, becoming visible and becoming helping with resources, Department of Health. Where is COCTA? You can't find them. You can't find them. You, you can't find them with, with resources. Yes, they might be present in some of uh, interventions where we walk in and try to see where are these initiation schools are. But that is not enough for me to be present. I need to provide more resources so that those teams are able to work uh, 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 So I think that's one area that we need to talk more when we when we're in these meetings and addressing these issues. We must talk more on how much resources that are there. We once re, 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 uh, requested, uh, yeah, as, as traditional leaders uh, in the National House, that why can't COCTA establish a chief directorate or a directorate or a chief directorate at a national level and directorate in provincial level where in there is a dedicated personnel and resources that will specifically look on issues of initiation when the, when the, when the time comes, even if it's not a season, but a regular, you know, uh, continuous a program that is there, championed by our own department, with an with with a view to ensuring that we do not experience this uh, death anymore. It is not enough to, to allow Ungo Sundev to drive his own vehicle to go to Pisana and do the monitoring using his own money. And that's not enough because I can do that, but. Where do I get this money to put the petrol in my car and go to Pisana and monitor in Pisana, and whereas there, there is supposed to be government who is doing that? So, Chairperson, my am view is that are sensi enough? We are not doing enough as this department because we do not talk on the issue of resources here. We 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 have a tendency of bringing a lot of theory that is not helping the situation on the ground. The situation on the ground does not need theory. The situation on the ground, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, needs resources. As I am speaking, we are being helped by NGOs. One is called Vusizwa uh, Foundation, and, and the other one is called uh, Right to Care. Those are the NGOs that are helping us in providing transport, because you know, there is not all of us as Amakos who have their own transport, like Ungo Sunday. So we need transport. We can't find transport, and there's no one who talks about transport here. Because if, if my, my area can, can help, but there's another area who cannot, and I must go and intervene in that area, how do I get there? So, Muna Chairperson, I think let us start on issues of resources before we play a blame game to some of us let's start on saying how much resources that are there and then we begin to ask questions questions that are saying we have given you these resources but you're still experiencing death what are you doing so now as, as i'm speaking the contract between us and those ngos is about to end when that contract ends when that, those contracts end, how are we going to be helped to reach out to those initiation schools that are there? So these, these are the issues that we must talk more on as far as I think we, uh, we, should, we, should, we should be talking. Yes, the theory is good because it gives us 
a kind of an information, but the realities on the ground are not uh, telling to the to the theory that is brought in this meeting. So, Augustine, the chairperson, uh, some time ago, I think, I think that was around 2012-2013, where a Department of Health uh, deployed an amount of 20 million to assist on issues of initiation. And the purpose of that was for provinces to procure medical doctors who have undergone initiation to help to help provinces uh, in so far as providing uh, medical uh, support to those initiates that have got a problem. And that intervention indeed helped, because I still remember, in the Eastern Cape, in that year when those resources were deployed, we only had about death, about how many, we only had seven deaths. In the whole season, we only had seven deaths from 30-something deaths in the previous year. So, which was, an, which was a clear indication that if the resources can be there, I'm telling you, this issue could be a history, but it's not going to be a history now as long as we are still providing more theory and less resources. Uh, I think that is an area that I wanted to emphasize in this meeting, that let's, talk, let's, let's bring less theory and more resources and look at the results uh, thereafter. As long as we are still not doing that, we are not. We are still going to be found wanting in terms of how much uh, we do. Unkulego uh, Nyesi, who is a younger brother to Honorable Nyesi, was once had an NGO in this in this in this issue initiation. That NGO, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, was helping us in establishing rescue centers where those boys, when they are rescued by the initiation monitoring teams, they were then rescued to those uh, initiation huts so that they are being seen there by the doctors, helped by the doctor, professional doctors, and get them healed at that, at that space. But that Ungulegonis as well, contract has ended and Nayejo Yake is no longer in the picture. There is no longer those, those rescue centers. And if Kokta, can provide assistance in terms of establishing of those rescue centers so that when these monitoring teams are on the ground, if they happen to find these illegal boys and stuff, then they rescue them and then they keep them in a rescue center and then they provide an assistance from the medical doctors to look at them and, and, and help them. But those assistants are not there because there is no resources. So effect of the matter here, Chairperson, is that let's allow Cogta to come to this meeting and talk on how much resources are we then try to say we have given you resources you did not use them hence you've got this number of deaths so no that's 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 my presentation chairperson up until such time that cogta comes to party on the issue of initiation we will still be found wanting let's request and plead with Cogta as a department to deploy resources. We need vehicles. We don't want Cogta to buy us vehicles, but they can hire vehicles and give vehicles to, to the teams so that the teams are able to go to those, those uh, deep, uh, deep, deep rural areas and rescue these boys and actually also bring about issues of awareness to those families and, 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 and stuff so that at least when the time comes, at least People have got the knowledge and, 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 and information about what is supposed to happen when the boys have gone to the initiation schools. I think that is my take, Chair, and I thank you very much for allowing uh, us to also talk on this issue because it's really an issue that is, that is a problem to every one of us. Thank you very much. Honorable Director, is it an audience? In course, Simavus. Thank you. Want to start to respond? Sure. 
with the thank you chair mm. uh, greetings to the dm and everybody that is in the meeting honorable members uh, chair uh, i've noted what uh, dm has raised about the pondoland issue around during the time of Mosma Tanzima, that we need to revisit that and uh, see and explore what can be done in the circumstances. Because even in this 13 initiates, uh, they are taking the biggest chunk, with about eight of uh, those initiates are from our term. Uh, indeed, I agree with the DM. The numbers on the deaths have declined big time. But uh, those numbers <laughs> decline because of our efforts as the House uh, in partnership with the Department of Health, uh, Right to Care, Society for Family Health. I must mention, uh, Chair, we are given a lot of responsibility in terms of the legislation in managing this custom. But that function is not followed by resources. We are expected at traditional council level to establish initiation working committees that will monitor about close to more than 35 villages. That poor chief does not even have a car to move around. And Cocta is not playing the ball. To what uh, Honorable Fares has raised, I think we can identify about 300 illegal initiates, then why we're not able to, dest to destroy them. <clears throat> let, let me put it this way. The issue of initiation is a very sensitive matter, Chairperson. I went to the initiation school the closer way. So having gone there in the closer way, I cannot go to the Shubis and the Sutus. Yet we are in the same province and I'm a traditional leader. It is not that simple. There are just many issues to an extent that people would know in the Jokabi district municipalities, we've been managing tensions around Shubis, Tosas, and Sutus around initiation. So it's not that simple that we can just destroy them. And that I think is the terrain. Uh, because initiation schools happen in mountains and so on. And subs at times finds it difficult to enforce the law in those uh, areas. The involvement of traditional leaders in enforcing the law, I'll leave it to the lawyers. Uh, and I'm worried that traditional leaders does not have an empowering legislation to enforce the law. So we don't want ourselves to go on the side, other side of the law. Our program on initiation, Chair, is reactionary. It's only live in winter and only in summer. Between the, the two Our seasons, program, there's on nothing that is happening, Chair, and that is because there are no resources to do that. Recently, the, the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders have formed a partnership with the UNFPA to develop a curriculum that we will introduce to high school so that boys are taught at that level about positive masculinity and uh, a number of issues around initiation, uh, issues around hygiene, and so on and so on. I can confirm, uh, Honorable Director, that uh, we do work with municipalities because at provincial level, we have a provincial initiation coordinating committee that we chair as the House. The Premier is in that committee, MEC for Culture, MEC for Health, MEC for Social Development, and MEC for Arts and Culture are part of that structure. And even district municipalities, including Salga, they are part of that structure. And at a district level, 
We have a district initiation forum, working with the speakers of all the district municipalities. And we have the working initiation committees that works with the local municipalities. So there is a, some interaction with the environmental health uh, departments of those uh, municipalities as to how much impact they have. It has not yielded that much impact. Also, I can mention that we have a, a partnership that uh, we, we initiated with the Nelson Mandela School of Health based in Mtata around the penile reconstruction. So we're working with them. Uh, as for now, we are challenged with resources because COCTA is not funding us. And uh, we're looking forward that they fund us to some point. Donna Brumza, what are the contributing factors to illegal initiates? It's one thing. The initiation practice has been commercialized big time. Uh, and it's, it, it causes a lot of problem, this issue, especially around Buffalo City, around our Tambo, where there are so many uh, focus uh, traditional uh, surgeons that are not registered with the Department of Health, that are not complying with the protocols that are there. So it's a program that we would urge to be supported big time as traditional leaders by COCTA in terms of resources so that we can be able to uh, respond to this challenge. Indeed, Yona, it is a societal problem. And we keep on saying to families, the government and traditional leaders are not the ones that are taking their sons to the school. It's families. Families must take responsibility of their initiates whilst they are in the mountain. Uh, colleagues, you'll add to some that I have left. Thanks. The department, we, we know this is, you, I know DTA on the issue of resources will always say this is the responsibility of the province to take care of such. So HOD, I also want you to address the issues as raised by uh, in Kosindivu on this matter. Uh, the test of feel, is it you or the HOD dealing with the, with the other responses directed to yourself? Oh, uh, Chairperson, Mr. Ngatsu will come in first, Secretary of the House. Okay. Thank you, Over thank you very much. Mr. Ngatsu, can we see you? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me greet the Chairperson and the entire Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, quickly, uh, in trying to, to respond to some of the issues raised by Honorable Keza, he actually, amongst others, raised concern about uh, the lack of impact on endeavors that are intended to deal with consequence management. And, and, and I think, Chair, we also do concur that indeed there is a challenge, I think as outlined by uh, the NPA and SAPS uh, in terms of uh, success full uh, prosecution and the delays that goes without without thereof uh, because the intention of legislation uh, is is to ensure that there's there's deterrence uh, to to all those who are breaking the law in relation to initiation program and i think season after season uh, there's there's a minimum rate of successful prosecution and amongst other issues um, uh, 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 as, as outlined in the reasons that have been outlined by UNPA. Uh, I, I think it is indeed a challenge uh, because even our provincial legislation is very explicit in terms of uh, a, a pro prohibition and, and, and the, the consequences that goes with that. But, but I think there are these challenges that have been already been outlined. We are also hoping, Chair, because now uh, in the light of the new legislation that is going to be coming into effect 
uh, is first first September. Uh, there there is a, a hope of 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 some other gaps that have been closed because even the legislation that we've been using in the province, the NPA and subs, they have been raising some challenges in terms of other gaps there, uh, particularly of of holding accountable those that are also defeating the ends of justice. Then number two, that he also raised an issue in relation to the fact that there's no improvement on, on, on the fatalist, fatalities radar. We, we, we can indicate, Chair, that if we now we are talking about 13 uh, initiates that have uh, uh, died, uh, we, I mean, if we were to go back with all interventions, as UTM has outlined, we, we, will, rec- we will recall that within a, a year, we will be having about 80, about 80, 80 deaths. And I think as, as interventions were improved uh, year after year, at least there has been some, some changes, which is reflecting a decline. Though we are never proud, obviously, as a province, even if uh, two people died. It's, it's a challenge, but, but, but obviously there is an indication of 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 a, of a decline that is notable, and and we are also able, uh, chair and honourable members, to 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 detect the hotspot areas around the entire province, because because within the same province, because uh, honourable members also talk about the the need, you know, to benchmark, uh, getting good lessons you know, from within the province. Because, I mean, if you, you, you come to the province, you will realize that if you are you're going to Nelson Mandela Metro, there's always a zero death there. If there will be a case, it will be a one death case in five years. You go to Sarapatman, uh, same applies. You go to uh, Joe Kabi, uh, same situation applies. You also go to Buffalo City, a minimum number, uh, you know, and also Amatoli. But I think if you go to two uh, uh, districts, which is the Christiane district and the Oartambo, you will, you will always note in terms of the uh, statistical analysis that during summer season, uh, when uh, the temperatures are hot, you will get more deaths around Christian. Then, then during winter, you will have more deaths around Oartambo. And, and, and 80% of the provincial statistics will, will, will then uh, uh, be counted on those two districts uh, primarily. And, and it means that we are able as a province to, to detect, you know, where, where, where is the hotspot. And our interventions are also aligned accordingly. Uh, but, but you will be confronted with this challenge uh, this season. Then in the next season, uh, it will be another, another challenge, particularly around illegal initiation. In initiation schools. Then in, in terms of the proactive measures that are not in place, in each and every season, chairperson and honorable members, we do not go to any season without a plan. As, as early, as, early as, as, as February and March, we will make an evaluation of what happened in the previous season. And in doing so, we, we analyze challenges that must assist our plan for the forthcoming season. And, and, and we, will, we, will, we will mobilize all stakeholders uh, to ensure that we get ready for the season. As a result, awareness campaigns that have been um, uh, uh, asked here about, they will commence uh, sometime in March, April, May, when the season comes, we will have about three months of the awareness campaigns. Uh, before COVID, those campaigns will be taking place in rural communities, direct in conduct. But, but now when there's been this um, uh, COVID-19 challenges, we ensured that through, through, through our partners, we strengthen um, our, our advocacy campaigns through the media, electronic and, and, and print. And we can indicate, Chairperson, uh, here that we have got a partnership that we are having with these NGOs that have been mentioned, but over and above that, we have a partnership with SAPC, Umshoba uh, Wenene in particular, who are having a lot of listeners uh, in the province. They, they, they make a contribution uh, to say, 
these, these, these boys that are dying are their listeners. As a result, for whatever hundred um, percent that we 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 procure in terms of those slots, they will also contribute fifty percent to sixty percent to ensure that they enhance our campaigns uh, just before the season commences. Uh, and 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 in terms of these proactive measures, uh, Chairperson, we can indicate that amongst other endeavors that we we always do is to ensure that from time to time with the support of Department of Health, traditional surgeons and traditional nurses are trained for, for them to be empowered in terms of the health standards that they must follow. Uh, utilization of gloves when, when they, they are touching the boys and all other related matters. We are doing that every, you know, uh, before, before season. We even refresh them now and again. And these trainings, Chairperson, I think as reflected in the main report, they, they happen throughout all districts. We, I mean, those are endeavors that we are making. We always activate um, the initiation for uh, throughout the province to ensure that when the season comes, they are ready to, to ensure uh, that e monitoring is done at, at, at that level. Uh, then he also spoke about um, the, 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 the determination you know, by medical officers on the health condition of boys. Uh, as a matter of procedure, uh, Chair, Honorable Chairperson and the members entirely, uh, is that no, no boy uh, in terms of our legislation and our procedures is allowed to go to initiation school without it being screened medical. All our health centers are opened uh, long before the season to ensure that boys are screened. Uh, now, now we have also made an, an addition of ensuring that that screening covered the test, the COVID-19 test. Uh, that, that arrangement is mandatory. Uh, and food, it has been communicated to all traditional surgeons and traditional nurses to say, they must make it a point, even themselves as traditional nurses, they we make it a point that they are uh, they, they are screened for COVID-19. And uh, if you, you look into the checklist of what is being screened there, they look into the boy in totality, and you will find boys that are, are detected to be epi et epileptic. They, they will advise another route that they must follow. Uh, not, not, not this one of going to initiation schools. But, 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 but be that as it may, uh, Chairperson, we can indicate that once those boys are directed to take another route, uh, they will, th 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 those, they, they become potential illegal initiates because they, 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 there's, al there's always readily available illegal traditional surgeons elsewhere who are waiting for those that have not been uh, uh, cleared by the Department of Health. I, I think it's a challenge. Hence, you have an accumulated number of illegal schools and illegal initiates in, in, in the province. Uh, there's a matter that has also been raised about closure of initiation schools that have been detected to be illegal. We, 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 uh, in some of these seasons, Honorable Chairperson, in some of these seasons, Honorable Chairperson, we, we have actually, sorry for that, we, we have actually noted uh, that, I mean, we resolved as a province that uh, it is not assisting to, to just close these initiation schools. When we go to the initiation school and realize that these initiation schools, because most of them, they are hidden elsewhere, but, but, but initiation forum, they will make it a point that they reach out to those, to those areas with the, with the assistance of informers. When we, go, when we, when we find out that this, this school is, is illegal, these boys were not screened, uh, the initiation school is not known by the traditional leader. It has not been sanctioned that it must be erected in that area and all other related matters. We, we look into the condition of the boy, whether the boy uh, is, is he in a good condition. But, but if the condition of the boy is, is not right, that boy will be rescued into either a rescue center or a hospital direct, depending on the condition that that boy uh, is in. Because we realize sometimes 
uh, in, in other seasons, Honorable Chairperson, that uh, in, in hospital managers, they will complain to say they don't have beds for, for normal patients. And, and, and now, uh, because all boys, will, will, by, by then, will simply close initiation schools and say, go, go to hospital, go to hospital. Then you will have an influx of numbers in the hospital. And those community members that are, are, are sick for other reasons, they, cannot be, they, they could not be admitted in hospitals because there's a pressure in terms of accommodating patients in those hospitals. Hence, we resolved creatively as a province to say, let us have rescue centers that are erected in certain areas so that at least we minimize the challenge that must cause um, another problem for, for, for the Department of Health. I, I think that is the challenge. But, 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 but in other instances, uh, Chairperson, like for instance now, we know that the initiation schools have been have been have have, have been have been closed. It means that the monitoring teams have dis, have disengaged from monitoring boys out there. But then what happens if there's an initiation school that can be erected in Tanzania uh, tomorrow? That that initiation school we will close it immediately uh, because it, it is out of the season. We 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 look into each case according to its merit. Uh, honorable chairperson that then coming to the, the 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 issue that relates to the support of environmental health and uh, matters that relates to nutrition uh, some of the issues here uh, i can indicate chair that we are working hand in glove with municipalities and the chairperson of salga in the province uh, which is o o o o, o, o councilor koyo he is, he is also a member of the PICC to ensure that he monitors the support uh, of all local municipalities and metro in the initiation program. Then, then by virtue of us uh, having access to those services of municipal officers, we are having health and environmental uh, officers who are integrated in the local initiation forum, who are part and parcel of our operations. Uh, and, and they make preparations even before the season. Uh, if you go to Port Elizabeth, uh, they will be cleaning fields, you know, to ensure that the environment, but, but it's not the same situation that you find in all other municipalities. There are challenges in other municipalities in, in terms of uh, the, the support, uh, Chairperson, that we can indicate. I think with SAPS, they will reflect on the post-assisted measures from SAPS in terms of that J88, uh, matters and that bending of hands. Uh, then coming to this issue, Chair, of a high number of illegal initiation school, it, 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 it's a challenge, Chair. I, I think we can indicate upfront uh, that it's, it's a challenge that is really haunting the provincial interventions because when they embark in, in, in illegal uh, activities, number one, you've got an illegal a, a, a traditional surgeon and illegal traditional nurse, they make it a point that they hide those boys. And the possibility here is that, Chairperson, when we talk about 300 initiation schools that we have managed to, 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 to see, the possibility is that there are other initiation schools that we, we could not have seen under the circumstances. But we are reporting here on those that we have seen and, and those that we have managed to make an intervention. And, and most of them, uh, uh, they are having cases that are appearing on the records that have been outlined uh, because we, even if the school has not been closed, but whoever that, 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 uh, that, that has uh, uh, done something wrong, criminally that person uh, is charged. Most of them, you find them in these illegal uh, initiation schools. Um, maybe all health will come in on the on the on the unknown death reasons for the one in Heaven Hill uh, in Tanzania. And I've also responded to the issue, Honorable Direko, uh, on the awareness campaigns that uh, is done. What is being done to pre to prevent illegal activities? The our advocacy campaigns, because we 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 don't have a sense, Honorable Members, here that in the Eastern Cape Province. No one is aware what constitutes a legal initi initiation school and, and, and illegal initiation school because our advocacy campaigns are so aggressive. 
such that whilst we are utilizing SABC, we are also, as a house, we initiate a partnership with the community radio station hub, uh, where all community radio stations in the province are, are participating. Then we have got a deal with them, post-season and pre-season, uh, that they assist us. They initiate special programs to ensure that uh, there, there are a lot of interviews, uh, adverts that are run in all those communities. But, but, it's just, but, but I think the situation here that happens is that they embark on illegal activities, uh, not because there's a lack of advocacy campaigns, but they want to do so. You, you, you will note, Chairperson, that if parents uh, and families, we, we have always seen them as the weakest link. Whilst we promote that boys must be given water to mitigate dehydration, we, we even, through the help of the NGOs, all our teams that go to initiation school, they carry water. Once they get into initiation school, they will look into the eyes of this boy. Then you will realize this boy has not been taking some water for some time. Then they will be given water. The, then water is left there. But once you live as, 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 the, as the fora in that area, because you, you can't stay there forever. There's a, there's, there's a person who has been identified by the family to, to take care of the boys. Once you, 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 you go back, those boys again will, will, will be avoided from, you know, they will be prevented from drinking water. Hence, we're having these perpetual cases of dehydration. And in the messaging that we, call, we always communicate, we always talk about the importance of water. And, we, and if, even if you go to those areas like Sarah, um, uh, Sarah Batman, you go to Jokabi, where there's a drought, we make it a point as a forum working with district municipalities that we put Georgia tanks in some of those areas so that these boys uh, are, are, are able to access water. There's a lot of efforts that are being uh, happening and uh, uh, down there to ensure that the provincial government uh, is, is providing the support with the, with, with, with the municipalities out there. Uh, or Mr. Stofile, the issues that relate to the challenges of a lab, uh, they can be addressed. We are looking forward, Chairperson, to implementation of, of, of a legislation that it will, it, will, it will play its part. But, but we are also convinced, Chairperson, that I think unless we reach a stage where society acknowledges that we have a problem, uh, because, I mean, even if... Utuaulaluko is closed. You, 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 you are having now, you become now, you, you, we become uh, exposed as the province because you won't be having initiation fora that are activated in all areas. Then it becomes a fertile ground for the illegal traditional surgeons, you know, to ensure that at least they, 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 they develop an establishation for uh, throughout the province. I think those are the issues, Chair, that I wanted to, to contribute on, on them. Uh, maybe lastly, Chairperson, just, just, just to amplify the, the, the challenge of parents here. In, in Krisani, the, the, there's an incident in Krisani where the, the fora realized that this boy is having hallucinations. And because he's having hallucinations, uh, it was clear that it's dehydration. Then they advised that the boy must be given water. They gave the boy water whilst they were there. But when they were exiting the initiation school, they came across with the parent, the father of the boy. And, and the traditional nurse reported to say they have given him water. As a result, it's going to take time to heal. You know, look at what, what they have done. Those, that, that parent insulted the initiation forum members to say, don't interfere with my child. I don't want him to be given water. You've got such instances, person, where you go to Mdanzane. In Mdanzane, a boy who is on dialysis, a, a very uh, a situation that is so pathetic. This boy is on dialysis two days in a week. Then they take it to, to this boy to initiation school, abdicating the program uh, of, 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 getting, of being dialyzed. 
Then when we try to intervene to say, no, this cannot happen, this initiation school must be closed with, with the support, then the parents begin to threaten the forum members to say, once you take my child out of that school and he dies on his way, you will be held liable. There are such dynamics that are there, but obviously we had to be decisive in that instance to ensure uh, that we save the life of a boy. Otherwise, he would have done, he would have died if we, you know, Papa, there's a resistance from the community, there's a resistance also from, from the parents whom the government is trying to assist because here the initiation custom is spearheaded mainly by family members that the government overall is providing an intervention because they are dying, because they are, they are getting injured. Uh, but, but now in the process of providing that assistance, this resistance uh, come to fall. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I've covered some of the issues that we are sending. Thank you, uh, Chair. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I think Mr. Nganzo has covered most of the items that were raised by the honorable members, but just to pick on some just more than issues. Take, for instance, uh, Honorable Teza uh, did uh, ask a question in relation to the issue of an initiate having his hands bent out. Uh, Chairperson, you know, as Mr. Nganzo was indicating, the, the matter of customary mail initiation, it's a family matter. The people from outside, really, like government, are just uh, providing its support. If we, it's gonna, it cannot be easy for the members of the initiation forum or government to know exactly what is happening at that initiation school at a certain time. But, Chairperson, if the family has uh, maybe appointed a proper traditional nurse, that is the Kangata in Sikosa, it will be able for the Kangata to monitor and manage what is taking place in the initiation school. So it will be difficult for the members of the forum, even for us to say what was the cause of that, because that what's happened at Bumeni, when other people are not there, but the people who are monitoring the, ch the child. Coming to the case of a Haven Hills, Chairperson, in my report I indicated that that case, the, de the cause of death was not known because the post-mortem results were not conclusive. So that is the result that we've got there. Again, Chairperson, on the question that was asked by MPD record, the question was, what is government do, doing with illegal activities within the initiation schools? Uh, Chairperson, the issue of customary mail initiation is an, takes a collaborative approach. We've got a structure that is called PITT. In that structure, we've got police officers and, our, and the local municipalities members of law enforcement. When the monitoring teams are visiting initiation, they look at illegal activities that are taking place within the initiation school. So if they happen to pick up anything that is illegal that is taking place there, they intervene and then uh, arrest gets affected. On Honorable Khadebe, he asked a question as to what constitutes an illegal school. Chairperson, before boys go to, an, to initiation or they undergo circumcision, there are steps that are taken, more especially in the Eastern Cape, because we've got a legislation that deals with that. The first thing that they need to get is the parental consent. Secondly, they need to be screened. After being screened, they need to get a certificate of documentation, which proves that they are fit to undergo initiation. And then the, the traditional nurse that is going to look after the boys also needs to be certified that he's fit to conduct that particular task. Also, the, the surgeon that is in maybe also needs to be certified, and all those uh, activities get documented. If an initiate does not have a parental consent, that initiate becomes illegal. That initiation school becomes illegal. If the initiation did not undergo the pre screening and didn't get certification from the Department of Health, that initiate becomes illegal, and that initiation school becomes illegal. So, those are the things that we look at that would make us to decide that an initiation school is illegal. It's because they have not compiled, complied with the requirements that are needed before a person can undergo initiation. And then he wanted to know exactly what is the content of our awareness campaigns. For starters, in Chaperson, we conduct our initiation schools before, that is now before the COVID. We visit schools, 
We visit traditional counsel, we visit words. The content revolves around the pre-screening, the psychological and physiological fitness of the initiate, the health standards and the promotion of such health standards. And then that's what it mainly composed of what we talk about. That is why it is said, most of these people, when they go to the conduct illegal initiation, it is practically impossible for them to say they do not know what is it that was expected of them because we've got that vigorous uh, initiation awareness campaigns that we do. We do them physically. That was when there was no COVID, but we're also, as Mr. Nkansu has indicated, we're using electronic media and print media. Uh, well, Chairperson, you asked something about uh, the issue at Damzi. It is a fact, Chairperson, that these boys sometimes, without their parental consent, they meet people whom they ask to, to circumcise them. That is why sometimes you find that it's difficult for the parents to know as to who conducted the initiation. Sometimes even the parents, they hide these people because they know that these were not registered or legal in the way that conducted this. And that happens mainly before they before the initiation and they are, they do not happen at the initiation schools, but they happen somewhere in some cases in Port St. John. So when we met these boys, they asked, they told us that no, we, we just met with Tarasta when we were coming from school, and then we asked him to circumcise us, and then our parents were called after that. So it's a fact and it is true that uh, anonymous people or faceless people sometimes in go with goats, of course, they conduct these initiations. I think that is all, Chairperson, that I can say. Thank you. Oh, lastly, on the issue of e-legislation, Chairperson, as Mr. Gantz has indicated, we do have a new legislation that has not yet started to take place. But what is happening through our initiation structures, like your PITT, we do talk about it so that members of the initiation structure, they can prepare themselves for the new legislation that is coming. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, the NPA. NPA, NPA, anyone from the NPA? Uh, I think we can. Okay. Can you hear me, yes, we can see you as well. Proceed. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, I, I just have one answer, uh, just to answer uh, from another uh, class. Uh, was the question, two questions that needs a uh, my attention. The first one is in relation to, he asked if, is there something wrong uh, for using a traditional a healer? Unfortunately, uh, there is something wrong because the law speaks of designated medical officer, not any other type of uh, uh, intervention that is a medical intervention. So, if you look at those cases, uh, the law says, let me just uh, quote the section 20 and 21. They deal with this specifically. Uh, 20 gives it a duty to the surgeon uh, that he must train the, the nurse to deal with the health of the initiates. So, and it places duty also on that um, traditional surgeon to, to report any sign of ill health to, to the uh, traditional leadership. And the section 21 places duty on the traditional nurse. And the, the legislation in that one is very clear to the nurse that it put more possibility on the nurse because he's the one who is staying with the, I mean, who stays with the initiates. It says that he must support at the earliest uh, sign of ill health on the initiate to the designated uh, officer. If you look at that case that uh, Mr. Gaza is uh, talking about, the initiate has been sick for seven days without reporting. Therefore, they be, they, they broke the law. And now as a result of that, uh, the boy uh, passed away. So there must be consequences. Another question uh, that Mr. Gaza also uh, talked about was the case of 
homely, uh, homely heights uh, as to how come the cause of death is not known. Uh, that case is still new. It was open in July and uh, we are waiting for the post term. Once the, the post term is available, we'll be able now to know that matter is still under investigation. I think those were the two questions that uh, needed my attention. Sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Advocate uh, Pangalela, is there anything you want to y Yes, add? Madam Chair, quickly and very briefly, perhaps, because much of uh, <laughs> matters have been uh, covered. Uh, the Honorable Beki Hadebe, uh, with an H, spoke about uh, <laughs> illegal circumcision school, and they asked what constitutes, you know. Um, I think Mr. Stofile tried to cover that, but... Uh, from the legislation and legally, I wish to mention that if you read the act itself uh, on the definition, there is no definition on the legislation of illegal uh, circumcision school. I think this uh, terminology or this word is a broad word that speaks about uh, the uh, absence of parental consent, you know, the underage circumcision, um, without uh, undergoing as a health screening, et cetera, and et cetera, you know, um, unregistered in maybe and uh, unregistered nurse. Lastly, the, uh, I've noted, uh, Madam Chair, your concern insofar as uh, the update on the previous uh, cases on my report. My impression was that uh, we are needed to, we are required to reflect on the winter season 2021 but uh, i've noted that next time you will get even more um i think that's all because mr Gansu also covered about the the resistance or committee resistance towards um involvement of the police and their own involvement you know and this uh, causes some uh, challenges in so far as uh, and it could be the reason why we have high withdrawal rates insofar as this uh, prosecution in these cases. Was well, clearly there is no uh, appetite from the parents, from the initiates themselves, once they have recovered. And unfortunately, it is very difficult uh, to force them, you know, to, to testify in court. We are not, we're left with no option but to withdraw many of these cases. And uh, perhaps it may be of note for yourself, even though they are hot spots area like OR Tambo, there is no, we do not have a dedicated court where these cases uh, uh, of circumcision related matters are, are dealt with. You know, so they get uh, processed in the normal district and regional courts, which are already uh, overloaded, you know, so, I, I just felt I need to mention that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, even for the opportunity. Thank you, Advocate Bangalela. Initially, we needed, we were dealing with the summer December 2020, and we want to appreciate that you were proactive to share with us the winter one, the one of 2021. Hence, majority of the cases are new. But I should think we must give you time maybe in two weeks time. You zoom in from 2018 up to end of July, the, up to winter 2021, and then update us because there's been a lot of concern to say some cases have just gone, there's no, no been action on the follow up. Like your colleague attempted to deal with the 2018 ones. You still owe me the 2019 ones in the 2021. So I think you'll have to update that so that in our follow-up meeting, we'll be able to deal with that. But let me give you a period of two weeks. I hope Advocate Ntwela, you can hear us so that you go through each case because these are the matters that have, have been inundated with a lot of questions. I can even share with you with the ones that the media has sent to me. 
to say these are the matters that have just gone. There's been no follow up on the part of the NPA and the SAPS. So we need to respond to that so that you are able to then also share with them to say, and I'm glad that you've raised also the challenges that are also coming from the families themselves. I'm so happy today because throughout the impression was created to see if a the security cluster doesn't want, the justice cluster doesn't want to act on these matters. But you having enlightened all this today, at least now we know, we understand that there are also parents, the initiates themselves. I mean, how do you just come across somebody you don't know? in the street, he says, I want to circumcise you, take you through initiation, you just agree like that, a stranger. I mean, in all fairness, because what goes to court has to be tested because it looked like the impression was created that you're just throwing out the, away the, the, the cases, but given the explanation that you have given us today and you can give us the updated report, I think we need to appreciate that. And then the person that they have not yet spoken is the brigadier. Uh, yeah, you must say something as well, then I'll hand over to the GM. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Well, let me put myself, okay. Thank you. It's your thank last you. Public, public engagement, by the way, we need to see you more. Yeah, because but you won't see me more after today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chair. I, I think, Chair, a lot has been said by my team. Uh, I will call them my team because we are all in the very same boat. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, I wanted to agree with Umkaya from Epeti. Uh, um, maybe I wrote it wrong. Yeah, I wrote Honorable, Honorable Cesar or Cesar. I don't know which is the correct one. The, the last one, the last one. Uh, all right, thank you. I apologize, Kaya. Uh, he mentioned the very pertinent issues in terms of the constitution, yeah, in the Bill of Rights. I understand exactly what he is saying. But if the parents, parents themselves, can take note of those section 27, 28, 10, and 11, because the police, the police, their mandate is in that section 205, subsection 3. We, we have to prevent, we have to investigate, we have to combat and do all those other things of which we are doing it now in this thing. Proactively so, we are together in this integrated awareness campaigns, talking to the communities at large, talking to parents, talking to radios, talking about everything that is provisioned in our uh, circumcision law in the Eastern Cape. But honestly speaking, umama ungosi umsaudi, as well as ungosi ndefu, they also alluded to the fact that the parents themselves, they are playing a really a game that is not acceptable because as they indicated the chair, the parents are making it difficult for the successful investigation of, 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 of our cases here. If um, Utamzi is Tamzi, that Tamzi has got no other name other than Tamzi, Describe Utamzi, he's got a sporty, he's wearing a sporty, he's get this, that is the description of a person. That would, where does he stay? Nobody knows where he stays. It jeopardizes the case itself. That is why these cases are being nullity at the court, because the investigating officer has got nowhere to go to get information to link this uh, suspect to the case that has been committed. As the other speakers have indicated, as much as we are having our coordinators in our crime prevention approaches that are visiting the bombers at certain times, I was in one of the bombers here in, in, in Mtantani. When I get there, I saw there is really water. Water is there. 
you find this initiative asking this initiative will play very life, very life. That I we are getting water here. We get they know exactly what we are, what 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 we are looking for. But once you leave, as Mr. Nganzo was mentioning, they go back to the very same thing that they're doing. I, I, I am sure we still need to go deep into engaging with e-communities. I want to make an, a good example of my own son. A parent should take a responsibility of own. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, minister here yeah, mentioned something about uh, maybe it was the Unkosi Umshawli uh, where was saying those uh, uh, parents having no husbands, there is relatives that are males in the family that should take a responsibility of the initiation of their own child. My own son was looked after by myself through the ikangata that I have identified. This Nalati lady that was mentioned, yes, that person is a messenger of the Umkweta. Whenever there is something, or for ikangata, whenever there is something, this person must go and make sure that, but this child is being schooled as well. That I was circumcised by Tamzi. Whenever is asking you, is Tamzi, you don't know where Tamzi stays. I mean, it, it, it makes it very, very difficult. The only thing that can assist us is to uh, equip the communities, the parents, to understand that these are the lives of their own children that are playing with. Because they are allowing these things sometimes. And the child, if the child is denied because of money that are not at home, is denied the, the, this uh, uh, chance to go for a circumcision. is 18 or 19. This child will find ways of getting to these workers in the beast. So it's something challenging that needs an in-depth research by a researcher. I should think we need to have a researcher in this who will integrate all the laws in the whole country uh, that is regulating e e e circumcision. Unlawful circumcision, yes, it's correct because the, 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 the Eastern Cape uh, uh, circumcision law has got some requirements that must be met by the parents, the traditional leadership, the doctors, the initiate itself, the, the, the traditional uh, surgeon and the nurses. Should any of those things are not happening, then it becomes unlawful because the person did not meet the requirements. So on that score, we actually therefore opening a case of unlawful circumcision. That is the charge that we are putting in our computers, of which then for, for prosecution purposes, it's not really easy if there is no information to link the person. Um, the bending of hands, that is, that is really bullism. It, goes back to what uh, Honorable Kaiser was saying with regard to um, the, the, the Section 28 of the Children's Rights, because the child, it says a child need to be protected from e e maltreatment. We cannot deny the fact that e maltreatment is happening at the at the initiation schools, but that maltreatment need to be uh, managed by the traditional nurse. Parents being monitoring, supervising, going, visiting. Day. If that is not happening, then it becomes a challenge for somebody else. But be that as it may, chair, we as the PITT structure in the Eastern Cape, we have held hands to ensure that we are lowering the numbers as the DM of the propeller was mentioning. If you can look at what he has mentioned from 2010 to 2014, 
2010, 2013 numbers were, were floating up and down, fluctuating. From 2014, then the numbers started to decrease. Now we are actually uh, saying we are below 20. We are below 20. That below 20 is also too much because there's lives that are being involved there. Therefore, it means this issue of circumcision is a societal matter. It cannot be for only certain departments in the country. Thank you, Chair. I agree with you that this is a societal matter. 100% agree with you. And even when you are going to retire Brigadier Ontario, you will continue to champion this matter. That reminded me that uh, the president has directed this committee as he was addressing the, the National House uh, this year, saying that we need to host an initiation in Daba before the end of this year. So that's the matter that you assist with uh, as this committee and your province as the one with the highest fatalities I think we must utilize it as a case study, especially the issues that you are saying between 2010 and 2013 numbers were floating, uh, but from 2014 with the intervention and now also with the act that is coming to be effective from the 1st of September, maybe we'll see something. So maybe we must allow this act to kickstart uh, DM then plan to host this thing uh, between November uh, or before we, we go on recess in December. That's what we should do. So also we can also be able to assess that impact uh, within that uh, two months period. Then I will allow you, um, sorry, I'll allow you deputy minister to say something as we uh, want to wrap up this a meeting. These matters are ongoing, as I have said, and you have had me directing the NPA to give us those uh, progress reports on the prosecutions, including subs. Uh, before you go, Brigadier and Tavo, the progress on the arrest and everything from 2018 up to, to date. So that we'll use this information also as baseline uh, information. So I've directed you that we need to get that information uh, uh, in two weeks time because I'm understanding the, 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 the number of information that the extent of the information that you need to acquire, including the updates on those cases that might be happening during the course of this week, the next week, uh, yeah. So those are the issues that I want us to also attend to. Over to you, uh, DM Wapela. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thanks to all the participants and their responses that were as helpful really to then begin to engage on this matter seriously, including the questions from the honor was that uh, were as informative and helping us to think and look at the matters. Uh, just for issues, uh, Chair, and then maybe starting with the one that we are suggesting that maybe we need to have a additional summit or something of that nature, uh, as this is a societal matter, a society matter, including the, the, the portfolio committees and the provinces, uh, as, as government, nationally, provincial also, uh, towards the implementation of the new law. Uh, and, and hoping, therefore, that the DG and the team will start working on an implementation model uh, on this particular issue and use that summit as an educational summit too uh, and as a uh, public awareness summit that the society can see us at the leadership level, at the highest levels, coming together, putting our heads together, focusing on a matter that concerns our children and uh, that saves lives at the same time. I, I think uh, I'm just saying October because uh, anything towards November, December, uh, if the COVID 
the fourth wave does not come, uh, obviously those who are going for the December initiation uh, will then be allowed to be going in, depending on the COVID circumstances, obviously. And uh, they need to go knowing there for that. There's this new law that is now com has commenced. And uh, what are the do's and the don'ts in that law? Uh, what are the punishable offenses and what are this group of offenses? Uh, so that then the nation then can then begin to focus on the matter together with us. And then the second issue is this issue of water. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a myth, unfortunately, that uh, uh, is there and is big, is wider. Uh, we need to reach people in the villages, we need to reach people in schools, we need to reach people in the churches, we need to reach people on the streets. We need, we need to reach as many, really talk and demystify uh, this particular myth so that we are able then to clear it in the heads. I know that uh, during the, the colonial wars, uh, when emphases were being prepared or the wars were being prepared, uh, the, those who have been prepared for her initiation was was linked to it because boys were coming of age and before they go into the army or go to the war, they would then be initiated. And, and, and that initiation also had the military training elements in it. Uh, and then where people were denied water for some days as part of preparing the body. Days of work because soldiers then were working uh, there were no trucks and, and, and vehicles at the time. And when you go deeper into the history of why people are denying water, they say, uh, there were great, our forefathers did it, and why can't we do it? And the body is no longer as strong as before. We live a softer life. We sleep on beds. We are not sleeping on the floor like before. We, we eat three times a day. We drink water every day. When the body then goes into initiation and it gets a shock of not absorbing the usual norm, uh, and, then, and then these things then happen. Even the training of the police and the army today, they still get water in their training. But I don't know. There's this element that, no, 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 this one is traditional, it's custom, and they then attach it to tradition and custom. And here it was a phase of a situation that, those communities that time during the colonial battles had to face with. And now adaptation uh, is difficult. So they will definitely indeed refuse water. I did go to some of the schools where we have been asking the question, is there water and what have you? Those children told us that no, they will not drink the water. It's part of the training that they need not to drink water. And I said, why? He says, no, when we get out, they get asked by those who were previously there to say, did you drink water? And if you say yes, they say, ah, when well, no, been uh, and, and, and then therefore the stigma elements are huge and big. Uh, and therefore it's education, public awareness, pamphleteering, uh, writing about these things, talking about these things, get professors and knowledgeable people, traditional leaders also, pegged on the radio and television really to begin to demystify the element of water and kill it once and for all so that dehydration does no longer become the number one killer for the children when they go to initiations. The second issue was the, the third issue was the budget issue by Gose and Devo. Uh, correctly, some Gose, you're right. The Cogta has in many numerous uh, issues, Lona have not been able to come on board. We have been battling to get money nationally. And the cocktails in the provinces are also under budgeted, I must say. And, and, and therefore, this issue of the budget to the DTA in particular, uh, side of the cocktail, uh, is something that uh, we hope this new law. And, uh, and uh, I was asking the, the, the DG here now that uh, I hope this law gives us an opportunity to go to Treasury and say, we are to implement this law. These are the requirements. We need money national. We need money in the cocktails in the provinces. So that then the cocktails in the provinces will be able then to support the initiation forums. They will also be able to give whatever necessary support to add to what the health is giving, to add to what the NGOs are giving, to add also to, 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 to what social development is doing. 
and, and, and therefore as a program that is well costed and in a program that we know that two seasons in a year we ought to spend money on the June season and the, and the summer season. So therefore this budget, uh, when it went through uh, the cabinet, we had indicated the financial implications is an element of ensuring therefore that we go in and get that money. And COGTA must really come on the table with something in hand. Uh, both COGTAs are the national and COGTAs in the provinces. What the minister has now since done, he has written to the premiers to say this new law is coming. Uh, the establishment of the provincial initiation oversight committees as a body required in the new law ought to be established, composed by the following type of people. And, and then the issues of the budget now that will make sure therefore that these committees are fully functional, preparing, and then also observing and oversighting during, and also do the assessment post. And then therefore they will need resources. Uh, and, 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 and I think this then therefore give us a, an opportunity. Now I take the issue that court has not been uh, really coming to this. To, to, yes. And the last then chair is, is just really to say in our public awareness and education included uh, is really to then begin to demystify, but in addition to take this program as part of the social cohesion and nation building, people must embrace it as part of us building a society that we want that respects its cultures, traditions, and customs that are not harmful to society and not harmful to our children and then that are part of the building blocks of a, a South Africa that is united in its diversity as the constitution dictates. And, and then and therefore really have to make sure therefore that uh, this matter is, is looked at that. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. I'm glad that you've addressed the issue of resources and funding uh, on the part of DTA nationally. HOD, uh, it was that the end of the village meant to deal with the issue of funding or the HOD and the Lefani can deal with that. The issue of funding, funding, funding. Maybe you also need to clarify as this, as you do that HOD. I, 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 I'm reliably informed that in all those legal schools, even in the illegal one, there's a, a price that parents have to pay for sending uh, their kids there. Uh, uh, the school owners, because seemingly they call its own government to do something. And which I know in terms of the PITT, government has deployed resources. But uh, what role? Is it all about the school owner deriving the benefits when parents pay? Because I don't even think that they even pay tax out of that money. So that's the question I'm trying to throw at you and that is to feel and Andile Fani, the HOD in the province. Then on DTA, DG. Uh, remember the issue of your status of the implementation, the state of readiness. We've dealt that with that in the TKLA. We'll have request you to also brief us on that one, on the status of readiness, on the implementation of this act. Now that the president has signed it into law and it's going to be effective. I think somewhere in the next month, you need to give us and share with us also on the costing part of it because Implementing the act will require resources. Did you consider that, or you're going to put it into your next budget now that there's also adjustment budgets that are coming? So those are some of the issues that you need to seriously look at and consider that. You want to say some things to fill or should I just send it over direct to the HOD? Uh, maybe uh, uh, Chairperson, I can come in on this. On this issue of uh, what the parents are supposed the price to pay, a uh, person in the Eastern Cape, the kind of schools that we are talking about, it's not a school where you'll have a group of people, maybe hundred or more, like in other provinces, 
but we also call them a school if I take my boy to an initiation school. But in some instances, there are schools where you'll find that maybe they have about 10, 20 children. But what is happening? There's an amount you as a parent that you pay to a traditional surgeon for conducting the practice or the, the, the operation as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a traditional surgeon. It's not that uh, there's a big amount that you pay and so on. It's only that uh, amount that you pay to the traditional surgeon for performing the, the operation to your son. And then that is all. The only fee that you have to, that is the only fee that you have to pay basically. That is all that we have. I think that is all, Chairperson. Maybe I'm not sure whether uh, HOD did get to your question properly. Maybe if you can just repeat again after having said, given this explanation, maybe so that we can even be clearer ourselves. Thank you, Chairperson. There was an issue that was raised by Inkos, the member of the National House, Inkos Nevu, on the issue of support by the department. And normally when we raise these issues with DTA, we'll be told those are the responsibilities of the province. So, in fact, what Inkos and Devo are saying is that as a province, you're not providing resources to traditional leaders to also do oversight and also monitor all this. There's no budget, there's no resources like transport allocations to help assist the traditional leaders who want to monitor then it means then it's an issue of resources that you are giving to the house the provincial house as well in cases because i also recall uh Nkosima also said to say this thing because of lack of budget we are seasonal we are only active during this period and that period in essence they were saying this lack of funding support from the province from copta in the province Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, uh, um, well, I think that the, the first thing that I would want to indicate is that uh, the partnerships that have been in, that have been, uh, that has been formed in the province, some of them, are initiatives that COCTA has undertaken, precisely because uh, the budget challenges that we are facing are animals. Um, there are always cuts every day. We don't have even a budget that is consistent. Today we'll have this budget. Tomorrow we'll get letters that are taking the budget away for COVID-19. But also resources, what we have been emphasizing, that resources at the local space where there are local houses. During this season, they must be of assistance. There are cars at that particular level which we always encourage that those cars when needed, they must be provided for so that uh, when visits are undertaken in areas where those car, cars can go, those cars are released. And the second point is that in municipalities where there are negotiations, like sometimes I know last year or so, Buffalo City did uh, as well afford uh, some made available some cars. We are always being approached to make sure that we assist. We, I don't want to, 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 to lie on the chair that uh, the budget uh, is a challenge, not also the budget at this area. Our core mandate uh, is seriously challenged uh, by budget cuts. Um, I'm, I'm uh, sitting here now, I'm stressed with a letter uh, that is coming from Treasury. They want to take more money from us uh, so that that money can go to the Department of Health in our province, which is suffering. At some point, uh, we're only left in our budget to do our core mandate with 3 million rent. As a result, I had to cut all critical positions and make sure that the money is made available for service delivery where we could afford. So we're constrained and uh, we, we hope that uh, um, the any legislation that is now going to uh, be implemented is going to be backed up by resources. Because I think that that's one thing that uh, I think that we, we're failing on. Uh, sometimes legislation is being made and we're expected to really uh, uh, fund that in the budget that is not uh, increasing. But I think that as well, the involvement of the member of the executive council in all the activities is as well a sign of commitment in the department. And uh, these adverts that are as well being made, they are paid through, the, we are able in areas to do some softer issues and, and, and make provisions of cars, but those are not enough, we understand. And that's, that's why even the, 
the partnership that was indicated here of UNFPA, I sat with them uh, when I, I, I got into uh, this position around November to say it would not be correct for this program to only be a program of the House. Let's have a memorandum of agreement uh, so that uh, we can look at other resources that can help in this process, especially strengthen what has been agreed to between the House and the UNFPA. So that's what I can uh, uh, say, Chair. But the, 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 the last thing which has been said uh, here, Chair, which is a big problem, which government is going to be under pressure, really, is the issue of uh, parents. I can just make an example about me, Chair. Now, my son wanted to go to initiation school. Um, president announced that uh, no initiation, initiation is going to take place. The friends of my son went to initiation school illegally. He had to cry for the whole two weeks, and I had to be a parent to him. To say, one, I'm the head of department. Two, I cannot violate regulations. And you must understand that if you do this thing, I would lose my job. Uh, and and, and uh, he was frustrated the whole uh, uh, three weeks. And, uh, and I had to put my foot down, but also playing around the risk and making sure that it's always uh, people are watching him so that he cannot uh, uh, take that illegal action. So, so the, the more we emphasize on uh, parents taking responsibility, the lesser the government would be, the resources would be demanded in government. But I want to commit to say, Chair, whatever we'll be trying, we'll be trying our level best in making sure that uh, we add on resources when budgets are available. We fought on budgets, we're fighting now. There was a budget session. We're fighting. The indications are that our budget is dropping again for the other years to come. It's not increasing at all. As a result, now, the decision I've taken as an accounting officer is to say, we are going to concentrate on our core mandate, our Department of Cooperative Government and Personal Affairs. So all support uh, uh, the units, branches in the organization will suffer a bit, even in positions, we'll have to redirect money to where our mandate is, 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 is demanded for. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you. With that response, DM, I thought, uh, I'm, I'm probed to ask this question further. What is the role of your Department of Arts and Culture, because this issue of initiation is cultural. And to me, I think you have got a concurrent mandate. As the department come to the party, I thought that it's a, it will be a classical example of you then implementing the district development model by also this sister department coming to the party. Uh, to say in also making resources available through the, themselves and also their institutions that are responsible for uh, uh, this issue of uh, culture. So those are some of the issues that DM, I don't want you to respond now. I should think then we need to probe this matter further in the form of this uh, a, a summit that we have agreed that we're going to do. We need to invite them if it means also us then talking to our counterpart portfolio committee on these matters that we have to deal with this. Otherwise, colleagues, uh, we have gone beyond our prescribed time by almost two hours, and we have just become counterproductive. I think I want us to end it here for today. This is the matter that is ongoing. I want to thank everybody, starting from the HOD and the team, uh, the acting chairperson of the house, including uh, uh, the member of the national house. Uh, the acting chairperson of the national house asked to be excused at one day we having an ex committee. And then to thank everybody who have made it up to this point, including you, the acting chairperson in the province, uh, Chief Mavuso. We want to thank all of you for making time uh, to Brigadi and Tavo. We'd like you to participate, though you will be on pension at the time. We want to wish you well on your retirement. But when you retire, especially when you've been wearing that uniform, you know your national duty doesn't stop at retirement. So you, I think you are going to deal with this societal aspect, responsibility aspect that you you have said you are going to do, do to, to, we must do that. So I want to thank all of you for attending the meeting and then rest when you need to rest. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Bye.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Welcome. Thank you, Chair.